Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcast, Rotor Talk Live, episodes 57 and 58. Got that coming up next. Welcome to this special double podcast of Build a Drone Reviewers Rotor Talk Live. In episode 57, we'll be discussing the DJI Mavic Air 2 and the Femi X8 SE 2020 updates. Join Ron, Marcus, Lauren, and myself as we discuss the Mavic Air 2 information from the FCC Grant ID database, possible features, possible release time frame along with our thoughts, and discuss additional information about the soon to be released Femi X8 SE 2020. So without any further ado, we're going to play episode 57 in its entirety, and then between that, we'll tell you about episode 58. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live Season 3, Episode 14, Mavic Air 2 and Femi X8 SE 2020 updates. Marcus, how are you this evening? Doing real good, Bill. Uh, man, I ventured out into the jungle today. I went to the grocery store. Oh, that is the jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All masked up and ready to go. Virus free. Virus free. Mr. Virus Brown. free. So that that went well. You did. You're okay. You survived. Yeah, we loaded up. We survived. You know, the next 14 days will tell the story. <laughs> did, did you on the way back? Did you stop and get tested on the way home? Uh, no, I wish. Okay. I wish you could. <laughs> Ron, how are you this evening? Well, you're doing good. I didn't. I didn't venture out any place dangerous, uh, like Marcus. Uh, I didn't. I. I, I don't. Th- I don't. No. Why well, I shouldn't say that. I had to drop a package off the post office, and there were people there, but they were. They had lines of tape six feet apart, and you had to wear a mask or whatever. So we were all following. You know the the. Uh, the you know the, the the you know the governor's rules to the letter so um practice and safe distance and wearing masks and they have big old uh plastic at the post office you kind of hand your package underneath the plastic to the you know the worker there so I, i'll give you more information anybody wants to know but but no I, i'm doing well today i had a little bit of a bug over the weekend like kind of a cold bug or whatever and i'm still not 100 percent over that but not to do with the coronas because i can my my lungs, I can breathe good. I don't have a dry cough or I don't have any symptoms of that. But um, anyway, so I'm looking forward to the show tonight. I mean, Bill T's the Mavic the Mavic Air two. I I keep, I keep wanting to say many Mavic Air two. He teased the Phoebe X8 2020, but he didn't tease the Mavic three, which hey Kessler said was coming. Yeah, I, I or whatever we heard that. Well, so yeah, so we got well, a I got I got something about tonight. And I'm going to throw it back to Bill and let him get into the meat of this episode. And hopefully our friend Lauren pops in later on. Yes, we're he hoping Lauren's going to confirm some in, of these uh, rumors. Well, one thing, I want to start the show off with a little bit of humor tonight, okay? Now, you know, it's like we can all use use a good laugh here, all right? So I'm going to share my screen here for a second. I saw this meme from one of my friends in high school, and, and I said, th- this is just too good to pass up. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start this off, and I hope everybody gets it. What concert is 45 cents, 50 cent, and Nickelback? <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. seriously, you know, it's just like have have a nice little laugh here. I mean, you know, I saw that in it's one of my friends from high school. She's 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 wonderful and she has all these corny jokes all the time. And this was and, and this kind of like kind of like topped it off. I thought it thought it was thought it was pretty good, and I thought it was kind of appropriate here. And you threw the cats in for free. That's right. Well, I got you beat on the post office, Ron. You know what I did? What'd you do? I got out on to USPS.com and um, they picked up my packages on my front porch. Oh, wow. You're good. You're prepaid. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I did. I sold a couple things on eBay and uh, we're sending something to my in-laws. So we just put them on the front porch and boom, they picked them up. The now, right no, I, I had a thought about it. I'm jumping you way off the topic here, but I thought about stuff. So I, I haven't been listening to anything on eBay because I figured, well, with, you know, everybody I work at ties being so tough, it would be a bad time to try to sell anything on eBay. Am I wrong on that? Oh, you're wrong. People are buying stuff left and right. Oh, wow. Especially, okay. you know what the thing is now, and I'm off topic for a second, but if you have like old hair cutting kits, they're going through, they're going, they're flying off the shelves right now. So, Okay, <laughs> and, good, good. and people barbers are charging fifty dollars an hour 
to advise you on how to cut your hair online. Can you get a Zoom a Zoom uh, hair appointment where uh, they talk you through it? They talk you through it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're digressing here. All right. And I don't mean to digress too much. We got a lot to talk about tonight. It's it's a pretty jam packed show. And as you know, recently one of the things that's caught a lot of our attention has been the Femi X8 SE 2020. Now I know um, Marcus has hit the buy button. Yours truly has hit the buy button, Ron. We're waiting for you, my friend. But, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give up any secret information. But wink, wink, nod, nod. I'm waiting on one of you guys to send me that uh, that new link that we were discussing today. You, you, you know what, Marcus? You, you know what? I bet, I bet Ron has been. He's under an NDA with Femi, and he's been has it, and he's been testing it, and he's holding out on us. Well, he, no, no. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go you one step better, Bill. Well, I think he probably has more than the 2020 version of it. He probably has the Femi X8 SE Pro 2020. Yeah, he, but, you know, but it's probably yeah. in another color. It's probably in black. Okay, is that is that Pro going to be equal to the 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 famous uh, Zeno 2 Pro? It's probably a hexacopter. <laughs> oh, uh, so so I can pretend like I had an, uh, what a unique product with me. <laughs> <laughs> Candano's a favorite brand of um, quad copters, unique brand. But no, yeah. to, to your question is, oh, Ron here, he, he's keeping his money in his pocket waiting for that uh, Mavic Air too. Well, you know, um, that's going to be coming sooner rather than later. And that's oh, a good thing out. I held the money in the pocket, huh? Oh, yeah, it is a good thing that you held your money in your pocket. Um, before we get into some things here, I'm going to go ahead and... I haven't had a chance to to like um, acknowledge people for a while and haven't done that. So we're right. going to get into that here. Floyd Motes is here. Daniel uh, Termina, Zachary Key, Drone Shots, Stephen Ewing. How are you, my friend? Jay Bird's here. Grumpy Vlogger, Lloyd, welcome tonight. Michael Wright, um, uh, uh, Douglas is here. Um, Canadian Drone Pilot is here. Um, let's see who else here. Uh, Darren Kay. Ian Fleming, welcome tonight. Um, David, welcome tonight. Um, Drone Addict is here. Okay. All right. Just wanted to go ahead and, and acknowledge that. Now, hey Bill, yes, sir. Uh, did you see David's comment up there? He's asking about when we think the uh, the X8 SE 2020 will actually ship. And, and you know, I think what the, the best answer for that is don't hold your breath. I mean, they're saying like May 15th, right? If you have it by July, be happy. And and maybe we'll get them earlier. Maybe. Okay. That's a, that's a real good point, Marcus. And that was something that I wanted to thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Because one of the things that, that's, that's kind of a key here with all of this, it's coming from Banggood's U.S. warehouse. All right. Now, there was a discussion that went on in my Feeney Facebook group today, which was a real good one. And somebody brought up a good point. Like when, if they all come to the warehouse, okay, they all don't have to be, you know, th 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 there's no tariff, there's no inspect customs inspect. I mean, it's all done. Okay. Th that's done ahead of time. So when it's here, it's, it's like, it goes out from that U S warehouse. Now I was on a chat with Banggood. They really couldn't tell me where their U S warehouse was. I was kind of curious on that. But the one thing I can say is this. I'm about, I won't say I'm as certain as I am about the Mavic Air being, to being in the country, but I would make a bet, I'm probably about 80% sure that it's already sitting in those U.S. warehouses and it's just waiting for a release. Now, I also noticed today too, that there were 947 pre-orders of the X8 SE 2020 when you go out on the Banggood site and it, and it lists that there. Now, I had a number of questions um, from a number of people, not only from my videos that I put out, but out on, on my forum. So I've, I've pinged Femi and I finally got some answers back. So I wanted to go ahead and share those with you. Now, the first one is really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here again. We don't want to see that cat meme again. So we're going to, we're going to take care of that. Now, the, one of the questions was about the sensor for the camera. All right. And, what was real interesting was they came back and said sensor one over 2.6 2, inch CMOS. Okay. And the other, and then I had, 
me see here. Okay. Um, I had a gentleman who emailed me today on the group and it said, um, they wrote, so on the group, the processor is from the Femi Palm. So this Femi XA 2020 will be worse than the Femi XA 2018. I'm not so sure about that. But um, gentlemen, it sounds like basically Ron has the camera already for <laughs> the Femi XA Bill, Bill, can, can I tell you something? Yes, if, sir. Go for it. If, it. if it's the camera from the, the Femi Palm here, this is a much better camera than what was on the the, the Femi X8 2018 edition. This camera is much superior than what I had on drone. I've already, you know, taken the you know the F log from this into Final Cut Pro, and and I've you know played with the, the color wheels and everything. Saw the dynamic range and it is better than what I saw from doing the same testing with the camera in the X8. 2018 edition so this this camera would be an upgrade over what we currently have on the current edition but in yep. my in my scientific lab testings well you know and you can see from your video uh, and, and i watched your video today ron that, that video from there w was stellar okay it, it it was it was sharp it was crisp it was clear um you know it it was it was stable when you were walking i was pretty impressed with that i mean for, for what you're getting, you know, and I'm saying bang for the buck kind of thing here. But but no, I was real impressed with what I saw today from the video from that. And if that is indeed the camera, which it really sounds like it is, I mean, th that's going to make this even more more of a value. Marcus, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Ron can speak to that better because he has seen both. He had my 2018 X8 for a while, and now he has the palm in hand. Uh, and yeah, I mean, just from what I saw looking at like, like just what you just said, Bill, I thought the video was very impressive. Uh, you know, from what we saw on Ron's video today, uh, I have actually have ordered that Palm as well and got the email today that it shipped. So awesome. I hope to have, yeah, I hope to have that in no. hand pretty soon. Yeah, I'll look forward to your, and, you know, we'll look forward to your video too. This, too. Um, this also would be better than, you know, the, um, our, our beloved Zeno uh, 2 because this handles the sun and the exposure much better than the Zeno 2 does at this point. Now, it's not to say the Zeno 2 won't be improved with firmware upgrades to where it does handle the exposure better, but right now, this handles you know, looking towards the sun and, and the bright light better than the Zeno 2 camera. Definitely. Most definitely. Now, one of the, one of the big things that um, – one of the big questions that I had been getting a lot – was about this Femi care. And apparently what I found out was, okay, uh, let's go ahead and I'll move it over to a slide um, here. Uh, okay, I, apparently I don't have that slide. But basically what, I, what the slide said was when I asked them about Femi care, what they basically told me was to check with Banggood. So apparently... Femi Care is something that Banggood is offering and not coming from Femi themselves. So, which I find kind of kind of interesting. Um, you know, here we're getting something from the you know the the retailing arm of Femi here, Banggood, um, that is you know supposedly kind of like you want to call it you know like DJI Care Refresh kind of a thing um, at a pretty inexpensive price. I mean, you know, it, it sounds good, but um, you know, my question and my direct question to them was for those of us that have already purchased it, is that something we can purchase again? And again, the same answer came back, check with Banggood. So um, I'm going to be sending some emails to Banggood to find out. And as soon as I get an answer on that, I'm going to get back to everybody. Um, you know, the, the other thing was, um, you know, th those were the, like two of the really big questions regarding this. Now, the other one is, is, is about the shipping. And I think we, we just kind of touched on that, you know, because, you know, this isn't coming from China. In fact, it's interesting. I had a gentleman um, who joined the group today and he pinged me on Facebook and he, he lives in Thailand and he said he's going to order it from the U.S., although it'll take him a month to get from the U.S. over to Thailand. But what he said was, you know, at that kind of a price, he said, how can I go wrong with that? Okay. You know, it's, it's, he says, he says, I just have to be patient and waiting for it. So, you know, I think we're going to see this a whole lot sooner than than we're, when we saw the Zeno two. I don't think we're going to have ha the hassles that we had with this, and I really think it's kind of sitting over here already. I, I think it's 
already sitting in boxes and it's just waiting for the date. I mean, um, you know, and, and what I think they're they're waiting to do is I, I think they're waiting to hit a threshold when Banggood finally gets a certain threshold, a number of units sold. It'll probably be released even earlier. That's that's just that's my that's my two cents worth with all this. So so you're saying that they're already assembled and in the box and ready to ship. Yeah. 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 Well, let's hope so. Uh, you know, all I'm saying is that anything <laughs> any almost anything. Yeah, yeah. Ordered from one of those uh Chinese mail order uh companies. Uh you just better cool your jets on on delivery time because you don't know. No, but I will say I just ordered that Phoebe Palm and it's already shipped according to your best. So you got a good point, Bill. It may, yeah. may, may we'll ship it right away. <laughs> but Martin, yeah, you you have a good point too. Uh, when we went for our Zeno twos, when some people had them, I think you were absolutely right. They said our Zeno twos were still in the parts bin or whatever. They weren't even assembled at, at the time. We were hoping to get them shipped or right. whatever. So I mean, just and like you said, any any answer that any of us say is all possibility. Uh, it's all a wild card. If you if if you're trying to make a living on predicting. The, the supply chain of these Chinese companies like, you know, um, Femi and Hups and whatever, you're probably going to go broke, Marcus. Yeah, I, I, totally, totally. Ron, those comments, my friend, are spot on. <laughs> yes, I, I agree 100% with you guys. That's just, yeah, to, yeah if, if, if you're looking to make a, make a living, if, if you want to get a career off of that, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna do well. I, I do believe right Beer, Bill's theory is correct. We talked about this the other night, maybe offline. I believe that Mavic Air too. I don't think it'll be a, ship, a, 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 a you know a supply and shipping problem with that because I I do like Bill. I, I you know I will buy stock in it. You know they're already in warehouses somewhere in the U.S. on pallets or whatever. They were just waiting for that FCC approval grants and all that stuff. But I mean when they pick a release date. Those things are ready to go. That that's that's my guess. That all, that's just a rumor. My guess, totally. Okay. Um, Big B sixty nine says I ordered one a few hours ago. Now, uh, Banggood shows you can't even pre order it. Eleven ninety pre orders. My guess is they reached a threshold of a thousand, and and they're just saying that's it. Okay. That, that, that they're that they're shutting it down, which makes sense. Okay. Now the other thing, and, and this is something I want to want to throw out, and I know Ron and Marcus have heard about this too. Um, I received in um, uh, Facebook Messenger uh, uh, from uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm guessing from Banggood, and it's one of their sales reps, and he contacted me, and he said, "How would you like a coupon to be able to to to, to advertise to buy it for two hundred and ninety nine dollars?" Okay, and I'm like. I'm going like, oh my gosh! I said, I said, this is even getting crazier. Okay, you thought three hundred and forty-eight dollars, three hundred fifty dollars was a good deal. You know, save another fifty bucks. Okay, you know, it's, it's, this is going from 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 good to better to best kind of a thing. Um, so you know, if that happens, I'll get that out there and I'll advertise it. Now, you know, I also I'm going to pose the question to Banggood is. What about for those of us that ordered it and paid three hundred and fifty for it? Are we going to get another fifty dollars back? So who knows? Who knows what the answer is for that? Go ahead, Marcus. Hey, so Bill, just while while you were talking, I went on the the uh, Femi website or the Banggood website just to confirm uh, what's going on there. And if you click on the U.S. warehouse, that is correct. You can no longer pre-order. So my guess is, is what you're saying is true, Bill. They ship so many of them to the U.S. And, the, and for all we know, they are already in that warehouse ready to ship. Now, if you click over to the China warehouse, uh, you can indeed still pre-order, although it is at a higher price. It's at the, the price is $459. So if you use that coupon, I don't know if it would work, but it would get you 20% off of that. So mm -hmm. I would say that we're correct in that the the days of the $347 FEMI XS SE are probably past us now, unless, as you are hoping, Bill, and me too, that that individual that got a hold of you, maybe they're coming out with a new coupon uh, and they have another batch at yeah. Uh, and, and Marcus, even even if you had to order that from China for two ninety nine, uh, that would still be a tremendous opportunity. Of course, 
Uh, I, I, boy, no kidding. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Two ninety nine. I mean, seriously, you know, it, well, the, the thing and they were talking about it on, on my on my Facebook group is that they've heard rumors. Some people have heard some rumors that the X8 SE 2020 uh, from China has already been shipped, is already shipping. OK, um, that it's not just a pre order that they are actually shipping those. So, um, you know, but, you know, again, you know, you're ordering it from China. It's probably going to take three weeks to get here. And you order it here from the U.S., even with standard shipping, you probably get it in four days. I mean, you know, it's like and, and like I said, I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. I would be, I, tr trust. I think I think this I'll go out on record and say this. I'll be surprised if they don't ship before the end of this month. I really do. I, I, that's just that's just a gut feeling that I have right now. That's just where i'm at dude i'm on your side i'm hoping oh, i know i know and, and ron's sitting there ron's getting ready to hit the he, he says you know what we're gonna be talking about that mavic air tube and he says man he says you know i have, I have to get dueling films out here uh, dual dual buy buttons at the same time here okay kind of a thing <laughs> so, you know that's where we're at well lauren's not here to join us tonight we're gonna kind of kind of flip gears here all right um you know the Mavic Air 2, it's hot, and it's hotter than hot, and the news is coming out left and right and fast and furious and everything, and I'm going to go ahead, and there's an article. Um, as you all know, you know, hey, Kessel is no longer with Drone DJ, and he's with um, XL Drone. That's the name of his new um, new outfit. Now, we're going to go ahead and – actually, Drone XL, I'm sorry. Um, do is go ahead and share the screen here. Now, this article – just came out and it says April 27th confirmed again. Uh, breaking news DJI confirms launch on April 27th. Introduction to DJI Mavic Air 2. Um, you know, um, please note it's, now this was a note apparently to a select group of recipients. Hope you're all staying healthy, safe, and sane throughout what's going on. I'm reaching out with some exciting news from DJI under embargo. If interested in learning more, please agree to adhering to us verbal NDA, we can set up some time this week to brief you on the announcement. Please note that all information regarding this email is held under embargo until April 27th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So that pretty much just lays it out for you, okay, that it's gonna happen. Now, um, you know, he, he goes in and he kind of pontificates here a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring up another article that he wrote um, that, that talks about this. And, um, you know, he's just, um, the Mavic Air tube available in all colors as long as it's gray, a uh, single and a fly more combo. And the fly more combo is going to be the usual extra batteries and, 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 and bag and, and probably charger. Uh, official launch and official Mavic Air release date is scheduled for April 27th. DJI will start shipping to customers around May 11th, and dealers should be able to order slightly before the official release date. Um, now, what's real interesting here, um, and Hey talks about it right here. Normally, DJI would invite press and media people to a location in New York City. However, with the city being a corona hotspot, this would be a bad idea. So interesting to see how DJI will do it this time. 100% online product launch. And I want to talk, I want to stop, and that's the first thing I want to talk about. Gentlemen, the Ma the Mavic Mini, it was 100% online product launch. Okay. There was no, there was no event in New York City anywhere. It just, it just, it was out on the webpage. Okay. And you know. We've talked about this before, and I know the three of us have talked about it, where, you know, it is advantageous for them, especially, well, obviously, you know, with COVID-19 going on, that wasn't even going to be a thought. But even if it was going on, okay, they can still get the same kind of exposure and, and just do everything, just doing it online and doing what they call those soft launches, okay? Because, okay, these products, DJI products sell themselves, okay? You don't have to, you know, you don't have to stand up there and have Michael Oldenburg doing what he did for the Mavic 2. And in fact, that's the last um, drone that was actually launched at a launch event, okay, was the, was the Mavic 2, okay? Everything else that DJI has done, well, they did, they, they actually did the, uh, the Osmo Pocket was done at a launch event, but that was a really small one. I mean, really small event. Uh, but everything else, I mean, it's all been online. The RoboMaster has been online. The Mavic Mini has been online. Um, you know, the um, the let, let me show you roll down for a minute. I mean, I know they've had new product size drones, but after the Mavic, uh, yes, the Mavic Two 
series of drones. The only drone they've released since then is the Mini, correct? Yeah, it's been yeah. the Mini. So yeah. all the other products, I mean, uh, even though they're all interesting products, they don't they don't have enough pre-interest and hype to um, probably draw a lot of people in for a big event. Is that would you concur? Yeah, I would I would agree, Ron. I think you know it's not going to gain a lot of media attention. Um, although you know, with the drone, and, and, and I just want to get get your guys' feelings for this. When when DJI announces a drone, it's it's always been a big deal, okay. And look how good the the mini's done, all right. And they went to a different platform, and it's still it's like like Lauren has said, you know, they, they can't keep them in stock. I mean, they're still selling well, and it's going yeah. on what we're we're getting from April into May right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like how many months out? Well, we're almost six, six months, months in, right, Bill? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an incredible amount of time. I mean, you know, when it, it first got, at first launch, it was like, you know, it, it was like everybody was grabbing them left and right. And, and I figured, oh, a couple of months, you know, you'd be able to see them at Best Buy. And everything. You still can't even go into Best Buy and buy one. OK, you have to order it. Well, to, to your point, Bill, is a good thing they didn't waste a lot of money on some kind of big fancy event or whatever because they didn't need it. Uh, just as you point out, you still can't get it in Best Buy or whatever. It's it, 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 they're still selling like hotcakes, so they would have wasted their money on some event to to hype up the interest because they didn't need to. And I, I think going forward, I'm going to let Marcus get his point in. Going forward, the only events we'll see from them is on their flagship products, like say the Mavic Three or whatever. We won't see events on non flagship products, Marcus. Ron, so I was just about to say what you just said, exactly. So if we think about the Mavic 3, when that comes out, hey, it is a more expensive product. It is more of a, a flagship product, has no question bigger margins, so they can afford to do an event with that. And as both of you said, uh, there probably isn't a need. There's a lot of pent up demand. I mean, just look in the chat here. There's a lot of demand for that uh, Mavic that's coming, that's going to be uh, released on the 27th. So they probably don't need to have an event. Uh, the, the other lesson here is, I believe if you want one, make sure you order on that release day or on the, the announcement day, uh, because the people that waited for the mini, uh, often many of them, not all, but many of them got in a queue and waited much longer even than we had to uh, for the Mini. And uh, Bill's point that he made yesterday on, on uh, Xeno Nation is, is important too. Also, pay attention to Best Buy uh, because yep. Bill snookered all of us on that first Mini deal. He ordered off of Best Buy, and he got his drone on the release day. So a uh, couple, couple, of, couple of different ways to think about that. Hey, I, I make a correlation, but, but you know, between the uh, the the Mavic, uh, the DJI process stuff, like you know, look at Apple when they when they release an iPhone, which is their their version of like the Mavic two or three series. They have a big event, and people there. But when they release a new iPad or whatever, there's no event; it's just there, or whatever. They 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 just released even during the virus, they released new iPads, just a press release, and it's on the site. They they release some updates to their laptops or whatever. It's just there, or whatever. You just go buy. Their, their only event is for the flagship product, the thing that drives the company, the the you know the iPhone or whatever. Just like uh, I think DJI, same way thing. The Mavic, the the top Mavic level, you know Mavic three. The top Mavic is what drives a company. Everything else is just you know, um, you know they're a good solid prize, but they they don't warrant an event. But yeah, I agree with you, old Bill. Nobody nobody can ask Mark Bill about getting to a getting to a prod first. So. I'm going to follow Bill's uh, best buy lead maybe this time, but yeah, you know, go throw it back to Bill here. You no, know, I was just going to say the same thing, Ron. I think, you know, when, when, when we're going to, and by the way, we're going to do, we might even do a simulcast uh, on both channels. Um, you know, both, both on, on Xeno nation and on build a drone reviewer that night, because that's when, that's when it's, when it's coming out. So I think that would be an exciting event and we'll, We'll work out details before that happens. Uh, Bill, isn't that funny? It's at 27th at 9 p.m., the start time for Zeno Nation. 
Yeah. That's... Maybe we'll take maybe we'll take pre-orders on the show. You said Marcus and I and Bill your money or whatever, and uh, you know we'll we'll eventually get you a, a Mavic Air too. That's so, right. After we let it sit in the bank for a couple of weeks and make and draw money. a lot of in, nice fat interest on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, okay, you, you make some. You make a great point as far as the Best Buy is concerned here, Ron. And and I think th that's a good thing. And we I kind of touched on it a little bit last night on Zeno Nation. You know stimulus checks are coming and you know it's like i wish we you know it, it's like you know I, I wish we didn't need to get these okay i'll, I'll just say that for right now uh, but you know what a better thing to do than you know invest you know when you spend your money to you spend it at best buy okay because you know you're supporting an american company i mean they are an american company our headquarters is in minnesota um and you know they've kind of had a resurgence as of the past couple of years, I got a new CEO in. He's done a lot of right things with them, and, and it's still and it's it's starting to be a fun place to go to again. It wasn't for a while, but now it is. And you know, it, it's and, and they've done a lot of things right there. I mean, now they have curbside pickup at Best Buy. Did you guys know that? You park yeah, at yeah. the parking spot, just like yeah. you know, I can go to Publix, call a phone number, and boom, they're bringing me out my package. I only have to go in the store. You can't right. go, and around here. You can't go into Best Buy anymore. A customer can't walk in the store. You can only pick up. That's crazy. Because of the virus, yeah. Because yeah. of the virus, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind yeah. of the way it is. And, you know, and, and, I mean, even normal, they would do that. But now it's kind of nice. And, you know, what makes it even nicer is, you know, they can throw in the back of the bed of my pickup, which is which is kind of nice. And we've had you them. You don't even have to touch it. Yeah. You don't even have to touch it till we get home, you know, and take gloves out and do the whole disinfecting kind of thing. But, you know, that would be one of the one of the primary areas that I would look at first when you're considering to purchase this is for those U.S. customers here who are in, um, U.S. people who are in the chat is to is to look at Best Buy or maybe, you know, in your country, look at a big box retailer that will carries DJI products and see if they have it in stock. Because, you know, we went out there and I'll kind of relay this story with the Mavic Mini. And, you know, we're all excited. We're getting ready to order, you know, and I know both Ron and Marcus and I were online and we're hitting and, and I initially ordered it from DJI and then I saw the shipping time frame and I'm like, holy crap. I said, I can't, I can't wait that long to get it. I says, cause it's, it's coming out on, on, the, I think it was the 11th. I think it was veterans day. Okay. That it was actually supposed to be in the stores. And then I went out real quick on a whim. I said, you know what? I'm going to check Best Buy. And I checked Best Buy and it says product will be available for in-store pickup on. And I said, done. So I went out immediately, okay, I canceled my order from DJI, I got the cancellation in, in time, and then I went out to Best Buy to get it. Well, I'm going to do the reverse this time, okay, instead of going out to DJI first, I'm going to go out to Best Buy first, because, you know, having having that pickup, well, here now, not only having in-store pickup, but if you have it scheduled to, for delivery, it should be delivered that day, all right, I, now that's, I, I would rather go to the store and have them do the pick up and bring it to you kind of thing than that, than that. But you know, that's six of one half dozen. The other. What are you guys thoughts about that? Hey, Bill, real fast. we got a, a good question in the chat here from Canadian drone pilot. He said, what is the dollar prediction for the fly war uh, kit for the new DJI Mavic air two drone? Now that's a real good question. Now I know Lauren has, and, and I know and, and someone posted maybe Lauren's under NDA and that's why he's not with it. And it could very well be. But he had he had mentioned like um, seven ninety nine for like just the, the base kit, yeah. and you know as as Hay alluded to in his article, expect to pay a couple hundred dollars more. Um, you so know, you think nine ninety nine for nine ninety nine. It'll be under it'll be under one k. And I almost always, if you can afford to get that fly more kit to do it, and it's not so much more for that case that's going to come with it. The case is the case is quasi functional. The, the ones that come with it, okay. But what the, the big value for that is the extra batteries that you get, the charger that you would get with that, and you probably get extra props, uh, maybe prop guards and some other things. But I think the big thing is the batteries and that, that charging brick that you get with that and the charging hub. I think that that's that's worth it because to go out there and individually buy the batteries and buy that charging hub, you're spending more money that way. So true. Just, but, but another thing uh, besides just the value, whatever, sometimes it, sometimes again, I don't know what the strategy here is, but sometimes you order the fly more kit, it comes later. True. And, and that's what happened in, well, you For know, many, 
right? The, 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 the base mini came faster than the fly more kit, even though it was the opposite on the Zeno too. Mm -hmm. Now what I did was I did get, I did get the fly more kit and it came in on the date it was supposed to at Best Buy. Okay. Because, um, you know, now I remember exactly what was going on. The base kit was available immediately from DJI, but the fly more kit you had to wait on. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this with DJI. So I went to best boom done right away. And, and the, and the beautiful thing is they take PayPal, which is and and if you guys just is an FYI for everybody out there, no matter what drone you're buying, wherever you're buying it, try to buy it with pay, try to try to look for a place that, that will do PayPal. I mean, you know, if you have issues, I mean, it, it's even better than a credit card company because they are very pro the consumer. Okay. Um, you know, they, they will, they will nine times out of 10, you won't have problems. I'm not saying they're perfect, but, um, that's a, the, you know, it's a great resolution, especially when you're dealing with international companies. Okay. That may not, you know, honor credit cards and all that stuff. PayPal is international. Okay. So anyway, okay. Off that part. I want to talk a little bit more about the drone. Okay. Now, some of the pictures that had surfaced recently, and I know on drone XL, um, showed the battery compartment. And it showed it, we got to see a good top of the drone. Now we didn't see a top sensor on the uh, on that drone, so that leads everybody to believe that there's not going to be three three sixty obstacle avoidance on this. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I, I think you're probably right. Uh, you know, it, it's so hard to predict what DJI is going to do, uh, but but because some of those guys that have been right in the past are saying that bill uh bill and ron i would tend to agree with it here's what i want to know is there you know we're all of course hoping for something other than wi-fi on that drone hoping that it'll be if not ocusync to some version of ocusync or you know uh, some sort of wi-fi on on steroids uh so that we hope for. Also, we know it's going to have uh, the receiver version of ADSB, uh, and I can't remember what DJI calls that bill. They got a name for it for their version of it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. I think it's uh, called AirSense. AirSense. There AirSense. you go. Yeah. yeah. AirSense. And and but the thing that I and I've said this before, and you guys know it. There is going to be something on that release that's going to blow our mind that we haven't even thought of that they are going to put into that drone. And is it some new kind of obstacle avoidance or something? Who knows? Well, I guess we'll have to wait until the 27th to find out. You know, I, I you know, and, and I know Marcus has said this before and, and it bear it's worth repeating because it's all the time, you know, when, when the Mavic two series comes out, okay. You know, they, they hit us with, not one, but two models, okay? The Pro and the Zoom, okay? Nobody saw that coming, all right? And I think a lot of the a lot of the, the, the hindsight in that was when the Inafi came out, all right? Because they wanted to be able, and it was easy, very easy swap for DJI to put in a, a different camera system, and boom, it was done, okay? And they did something we didn't even think of with that, all right? Where hey, yeah, yeah. here they're going to do that too. Hey, I'm going to answer your question, but real fast, I want to uh, highlight Michael Wright said he, he just checked and uh, Best Buy has the air for the, the, the old air for 599. I read that I read you could even get the old air cheaper than that now. So uh, different retailers are dumping, apparently dumping the Mavic Air 1 now. So that leads more creators to what we're talking about. But I want to answer Bill's question before I never get to it. But he asked about the census of not being on 360 on top. And, you know, that, and that leads credence to me that maybe we will get that 799 price point because if they're going to release it for 799, we can't get everything we want. Something has to go or whatever, you know, and that has to be 360 obstacle avoidance sensors. I can live with that if they keep the price down. Uh, and, and also, too, they probably want to say the 360 obstacle avoidance for their, their, their top of the line model. They probably don't want to let that filter down too low, low in the food chain. Also, but but I think it's more that they if they want to keep that seven nine nine price point, they have to make sacrifices, and I'd much rather sacrifice the sensors than the OcuSync. So, um, oh, I agree. Yeah, you know, what do you think, think Bill? Um, you know, and, and here's the thing, you know, and, and I know we kind of talked about this, and a lot of people in the chat last night, and I know 
um, you know, when we talked with Al last night, you know, it was almost unanimous that it has to have some kind of OcuSync or LightBridge or some other kind of non-Wi-Fi technology in it. And, and, I, and, I will, and I will say this, and I said it last night on Xeno Nation, and I'll say it here on this again. I'm about 99.9% .9 sure it's going to have that on there because DJI would shoot themselves in the foot if they if if they were coming out with a Wi-Fi drone like this. Everybody's going to go, oh no, not again. You know, yeah. well, we're no, my Wi-Fi is right back in my in my back pocket again if it's a Wi-Fi drone. Well, you know, and I know Marcus made a good point last night. All right, with you know the the improved Wi-Fi on the Mavic Mini. All right. And, and that is worth worth noting here, but I think people are expecting uh, an an up from the Mavic Mini in this case. Go ahead, Marcus. Yeah. So the the feature that they have shown in some of the pictures that I am hoping eludes to something else is that new controller. What I'm hoping is that this drone, like you said, Bill, is available with OcuSync to and you can buy it with the smart controller. That a much higher price, yeah, 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 yeah. And Have for somebody first... like Marcus, who already owns a, a Mavic Two series drone, Augustine Two, he is a smart controller that worked two drones. But uh, we, we talked about Bill's, you know. OcuSync guarantee. And why that's so important is not necessarily for, for Marcus and E, which fly in rural areas, we could take a Wi Fi drone out pretty darn far. But uh, our friend Philly Drone Life, who's in the chat right now, I want to shout out. We'll, we'll, we're going live right after this show with the uh, the Philly and Ron show, whatever. That's my shameless promo in there. But, but Mike, a, a Wi-Fi drone doesn't do him any good because he's in a city where every there's a million Wi-Fi hotspots around him, and he can't even get to the end of the block with a Wi-Fi drone. Marcus, I may be able to fly that 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 drone a thousand, I mean, you know, a mile out, but he can't get down the block. So that's why the OcuSync two is so important. And Bill right now has got the the the, the uh, leaked or rumored uh, Mavic Air two controller up on the screen. Bill, take it away. Yeah, you know, you look at the controller and like Lauren pointed out, what's it look like? You know, and the first thing you hit, it looks like a smart controller without the screen. I mean, really, you, seriously, you think about it. Um, you know, it, it's almost a, the, the size, everything. It's just it just screams that, that it's the smart controller. I mean, it really does. And, you know, just everything about that. I, I just, you know, it was good. That I'm, I'm glad I found I'm glad Hey had that that on here, you know. And, and then just, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go up here and we're going to take a look here. You can see, obviously, there's a sensor on the back um, on the uh, bottom here. Yeah, one of those is an LED, right, Bill? It looks like. Yeah, a, one of those is an LED right, right there. So, uh, 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 so it's going to uh, have. Bill, the, Bill, is that guaranteed not to have the hubs and drop? It's guaranteed not to have the hubs and drop or your <laughs> money back. <No. laughs> and here's the battery compartment here. And it shows this is the. This is the um, FCC approval on this, which which is interesting. So, okay, so what, what's your prediction of the battery? Do you think they'll quote like a thirty minute flight time? I think yeah, I think we'll get a thirty minute flight time on this too. Which well, will you yeah, know if, we'll if, if a thirty if, minute flight time with actually that'll be an actual twenty five minutes. About so. twenty five. Which yeah. I'll tell you what you know and, and think about it. And we talked about this last night on the Femi X eight SE twenty twenty. You know, having twenty five minutes. And I think Al was talking about this. I mean, he said, you know, 25 minutes for him is is, a, is the world, okay, for what he shoots. And Al's right. For most of us, having a 25, 30 minutes uh, on a drone, being able to have it up in the air, I mean, seriously, what can't you capture in 25 minutes, okay? You know, it's like, uh, Marcus, for example, you know, you go, you go up to the Snake River, you know, you're going down, you're going to eat up battery, okay? Because you have, I mean, the scenery up there is just drop dead gorgeous. All right. Of course, you want to run that thing down there like that. And you're going to need a lot of battery to do that. But but some of the videos that Marcus shoots, I'm just like, OK, I want to get on a plane, you know, after coronavirus is over and, and I'm going to be knocking on his door. And I said, you know, I got I got 20 batteries with me. Let's go, pal. Um, yeah. You know, to, to, to shoot that, you know, it, it's just like it's it's so it's so good. I mean, it's so, you know, so 25 minutes, I think, as far as a battery life is concerned. I think that's fantastic. I really do. Especially at an under thousand dollar price point, it certainly is. Hey, I want to shout out Ray. We got Ray Kelly in the chat with us tonight. Ray Kelly is one of the top 
Mavic Mini pilots down there in South Florida on, on the East Coast there. He flies all over around Palm Beach or whatever. So um, big shout out to my buddy Ray. Yeah, Ray, uh, it's definitely a shout out to you. And when the, when this when this whole pandemic thing is over, you know, I'll come over your side. You come over my side. We'll 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 have some fun on the beaches here. So you know, with with our drones, I th- think that'll that would that would be a good thing. Um, oh, uh, how about Floyd Most? He won. He hopes the Mavic Air too uses the DJI Go Four app. Uh, he can't use his Crystal Sky on the uh, DJI Fly app. Bill, we never talked about that before. Is it a guarantee that this will use the the standard Go Four app, or you think they may uh, move this over to the Fly app also? Mm, Nobody's talking you know, about this. That that's really t- and that's why you know would have been you know would have been nice to to have kind of pinged Lauren and and kind of got some of his thoughts on this. Um, you know, the Fly app is great, uh, and, and I'll tell you that. And I think we all talked about this. You know, and I know Marcus and I have the both the same both both of us have the same pet peeve is the lettering sometimes when you have a white sky up there you can't oh, yeah. yeah okay but other than that for me the fly app it's it's easy it's intuitive the menus because in the go for app if you remember in floyd you know the go for app you have to go into sub menus to find things all right and it's not always like right there uh, at the at the tip of your hand whereas on the dji fly app it's like right there i mean you don't really have to go down into sub menus to find things, which I think is great, and and I and I hope it was a model for for future DJI apps. I, I don't know. I think that's a great question, but for me, what I think this is just my gut feeling. I think they're still going to go with a Go Four kind of an app. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Hey, so I just wanted to throw one caveat on what you just said, Bill, with regard to the Fly app. And like you, I really like it for the simplicity of it and the ease to get to some things, not everything, some things you do have to drill down. But because the Mavic Mini doesn't have a lot of specialized functions, it can use a stripped down app like that. And I think as you get into the more full featured drones, it's tough for DJI to do that. I'm not saying that the app couldn't be organized better, uh, but just that's just a point. So I, you know, who knows? And uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, another version, an improved version of uh, the Fly app for this new drone would be welcome as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Just as you said, Bill, as long as they change the color of that lettering at the top, uh, make, uh, it black, uh, make it red, yeah. make it anything but anything. white. Yep. Yeah. Back, and, back, well, back you know, to, Stephen Ewing. Back to, hold back to Floyd's point, though. Um, you know, he doesn't want to fly too apt because of not being able to use the crystal sky. And also, if we're hoping for a smart controller, um, we don't know if the fly app works on a smart controller. So that, that that was kind of his point that uh, oh, yeah, it's not the fly app versus the DJI Go for app, which one's better. It's because of the compatibility issues. It, it was Floyd's main concern. That's a good, yeah. that's a good point, Floyd. Thanks for bringing that up. That's why Rob gets paid the big bucks. I'm just telling you. That's well, no, right. See, Floyd's my main man. Floyd and I have been working together for a couple of years here in the drone business. So Floyd sets me up with the good questions. Yeah, Floyd does. He, do, he does a good job with that. Okay. Well, you know, it's like one of the other things that um, I wanted to talk about here is this. Is, you know, I see this, you know, it, it's once again, you know, and, and this is something, and, and I want to ask you guys this question here is, you know, it fits, uh, DJI is, is a genius with their marketing. Okay. There's no question about that. Okay. And, and Frank Wang, you know, when, when you find out things about him, one of the things that he's always, always done is he wants to, he doesn't want to be second. He always wants to be number one and he wants DJI to always be number one in, in whatever area they're at and with consumer drones. Okay. So, you know, the, the spark gets replaced by the Mavic mini. Okay. The Mavic pro gets replaced by the Mavic two. Okay. I'm just going to talk consumer drones here for a minute. And then, you know, I'm not going to go to the phantom series, but then, you know, there's that gap and the Mavic air air was good. Okay. But it needed a lot of improvements. Okay. And we all know what the big thing was, you know, the Wi-Fi and the, and the sound of like a freaking hornet's nest. Okay. And again, I know my friend Ian over in, he lives in Southeast um, um, UK um, in, in England. He said he sold it simply because he couldn't stand the noise. Okay. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with the Wi Fi. 
that noise just drove him nuts. Okay. So, you know, once again, and, and like Marcus said, they're going to come out with something in this that we haven't talked about. All right. That's going to be something that you want. It's kind of like, you know, a, a good, it, it's, it's like Steve jobs was famous for that. Okay. You know, he puts, he put things on the iPhone that you didn't know you wanted until you had it. And then you said, you can't live without it kind of a thing. Okay. And that's the same kind of, and I love that. Okay. I think that, 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 that in a, in a, in a, in a owner of a company, I think that's fantastic. And, and, and it makes you really appreciate the technology that they put into this. One of the things I'm really looking forward to is this ADSB or the air sense that's going to be in there, because I'll tell you what guys, I actually saw it in use. It was on a Matrice, okay, a Matrice 200. I actually saw it in use. It was on a Crystal Sky. But I'll tell you what, it was, you could see everything, all right? And now, now what's real interesting, back at the time, that was only on commercial commercial craft. I was about okay? to ask you, will this be the first consumer price drone that had that feature, Bill? Yes. Okay. And, the other, and the other interesting thing about this, a lot of people don't, you know, you don't know, um, you know, I, I get emails all the time from the FAA. I, I signed up for emails from them and I have to wade through them sometimes. But one of them is this, as of January 1st of this year, all aircraft, okay, even your, your Cessna's, you know, 150s, um, everything had to have an ADSB um, transceiver on it and, and receiver, both, okay? So your private aircraft now, and that includes helicopters, everything has to have uh, ADSB transceiver and receiver on. Okay. That was man that was mandated. And the FAA came on out. That was a year ago that they said that and they gave you a year to come up to standards. And January 1st, it has to be. And if your aircraft, it'll fail an inspection if it doesn't have that. Okay. So what that means basically is when I'm out in the backyard and I throw that Mavic Air 2 up in the air and I'm looking on there, I'm going to see not only commercial aircraft that are up there, I'm going to see these pro small private Cessnas and Beechcrafts and hel helicopters, anything that's up in the air, I'm going to see. And, and it's, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, and I know both you guys are like this. And, you know, my I'm, I'm looking this way, I'm looking this way, looking up, you know, before I take off, even though, you know, it shows that I'm clear where I'm at. But, you know, invariably, I'll, I'll hear a plane in the area and, and it's just like, all of a sudden I stop my sticks and I'll go down about 50 feet. And I'm just like, you know, where is it? I can't see it kind of a thing. Well, there's no going to be no more guesswork with that guys. What are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, exactly right, Bill. I mean, uh, my ears are one of my best resources when I'm flying my drone. I don't know about you guys, but anytime I hear the faintest sound of an aircraft, my, my head is on a swivel looking around for where it's at. And if I don't see it, or I think even it could remotely be close, I'm pulling down on that left stick hard. Uh, so ADSB, that receiver, is going to be great because then there, there's absolutely no guesswork at that point. You're going to know every aircraft that's in your area. Um, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, um, I, I think it'll be, you know, interesting to have, you know, for sure, and, and a safety measure. But also, Bill, what I'm wondering is, you know, um, with them adding a, a, ABS two or whatever, they make the drone more secure. Maybe the Mavic uh, Air Air two. I, I keep getting these names. I gotta make sure I say them right. Maybe that this will be the first drone made that maybe will be able to kind of pass the new FFA rules, which you haven't talked about because of the coronavirus. But you know, after they get adjusted down a little bit, maybe this drone will be compliant enough that you can still fly this drone in three years. Um, any thoughts? That's a real good, you know, once again, Marcus, you know, we're, we're with the, we're with the man down here. Okay. We're with the man. He always comes up yes. Yes, with these, with these brilliant, these, these brilliant things here. I got to point my fingers. Right. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, I, yeah. Right. There I, we go. I, there I we go. Heard this okay. brilliant idea in the chat someplace. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Ron brought, you know, uh, and it's an excellent point, you know, and, and I think it is, I think it is the kind of drone that's going to be, um, new rule worthy, you know, for lack of a better term. And, and, you know, and, and, and I'll say this, okay. And, and I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm wondering if the FAA is going to maybe kind of like take a step back on all this stuff after everything that's happened and say, you know what, let's just kind of chill on this for a while and just kind of like, just put this to the back burner. 
And maybe DGI already kind of has, you know, an inside, you know, somebody there that they, they already maybe know that the FFA may, you know, get pushed back to the point where maybe the AS, I can't say it, AA, a what? Say, I can't say the ADSB. number. ADSB. Yeah. Maybe they already know that this may be enough, enough to keep that drone, drone flight worthy in three years. Maybe DJI knows, you know, more than we do about how the, the new, the proposed FFA rules are going to be, mm-hmm. are going to kind of, you know, roll out, how they're going to roll out after all the comments and stuff. Again, this has all been, you know, we've been pushed the whole back conversation to back burner with, with the coronavirus. I'm sure that there's, you know, all the politicians are involved in this. They're too busy back in their own States worrying about the coronavirus to, to have this be on the forefront anymore. But um, I'm just saying maybe DJI knows something we don't. And that's why this drone's coming out as the uh, FFA rule beater drone. You know, and, and Ron brings up a good point here. You know, it's like th- there is so much that's going on right now that, you know, it's probably the last thing on any lawmakers minds. And it's probably the last thing on the FAA minds right now is, is, is to come out with something like this. OK, because, you know, in the area that which I'm in. All right. Um, the way things are for us, it's really kind of frowned upon, you know, it, unless you're going outside to check the mail, take the dog outside, that kind of thing. They don't even really want you being outside where I'm at. Okay. That's the, that's, that's the consensus around here. So we've been trying to follow that and, you know, getting outside is not, you know, what it used to be right now. Okay. There are people that aren't following it, but for the most part, you know, that's why I haven't been flying my drones as of late. And that's why you haven't seen a Xeno two first flight video because of that right now. So I'm just kind of waiting. It'll probably be a couple of weeks, but you know, I'll get out there and get that first flight in, but you know, we need to kind of like, you know, it, it, it's good. It's going to happen sooner rather than later. And we'll, we'll you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be looking at it in a different different light. OK, here's the last question on the Mavic Air 2. All right. And this is and, the, and this is this is my question. All right. Now, last night I asked the, I asked the question of the panel said, would you sell your Mavic Mini for the Mavic Air 2? And the consensus was a big N.O. OK across the board, including me. I wouldn't do that, okay? Now, here's my question. Which drone would you sell to help pay for the Mavic Air 2? Oh, dude, I got so many drones. And the problem is I love them all. That's the thing. I, I, I do. I mean, it's it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be tough. Uh, okay, I got one, though. Okay. Yeah, let me get it here. Uh, the Esheen EX4, I would gladly get, get rid of that drone. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, how about well, you? Um, you know, I, I this winter I, I got my uh, my my Phantom 4 standard out and I flew it and it flew great. I got some good video and pictures, but you know, I've been I've been kind of wanting to move that on and I and I I have been held back by putting eBay thinking that, ah, well, nobody's got any money. I, I don't want to put it up now. I'll get the lowest price ever, but Bill tells me different. So we're going to say the, uh, you know, the, the, the Phantom four uh, standard, but I, I, I have a, I have a question for Bill though. This is good. And, and it can get back to Marcus. So we're going to oh. have two floating around here. Okay. Now if, if the Mavic two air comes out, you know, and it's, it's all great, but it has Wi-Fi instead of, uh, you know, OcuSync two or OcuSync anything in it or whatever. Um, you know, for me, my walk goes back. My walk goes back in the pocket again, and I'm I'm sitting on the sidelines waiting for the Mavic Three uh, this summer. Um, what about you guys' plans for the uh, the Mavic Three? No, you're you're that could happen, Ron. So I listen. Just it's just what you said. If there if it's just another Wi-Fi drone, if there isn't something really intriguing on there that we don't already have on current drones that we own. For instance, you know, we, we all three of us have a version of the Mavic 2, right? Well, what an awesome piece of equipment that is. And if, if this new Mavic isn't in some way an improvement or an addition to that, you, you might not buy it, right? Yeah, yeah. A uh, controller would push me into it easy. Yeah, well... Uh, another thing, like you know, I, I, if if this has OcuSync, I, why would I get rid of the Phantom Four for the Mavic Air Two? Outside of size, the Phantom Four standards 
probably going to be as good or better than the drone than this Mavic Air 2. The, the, the old Phantom 4 has 25 minutes of uh, flight time. It has light bridge, so it's going to go farther than any Wi-Fi drone. It's got 4K 30, and yeah, maybe the Mavic Air 2 has the 4K 60, but I, I don't get all excited about the 60 frames per second. And they're going to say that the Mavic Air 2's camera is better, but I bet you if I put the video side by side, 95 Five percent of the people couldn't tell the difference or whatever. So that that three year old drone, or or maybe better than three year old drone, may be almost as good as Mavic Two Air coming out if it doesn't have OcuSync too. Bill, okay. Well, you know, here's what I'm going to say. All right. Um, first of all, if I had to sell a drone, all right, right now, uh, it would be tough. But but I would do the Phantom Four Pro V2.0, and the reason I would do that is for me, it's portability. Okay. No. Say it ain't so, Bill. And that, I thought that was the best video drone. In, it's no it way. is. It it's is. no it's... way this Mavic Air 2 can hold a candle to that Phantom 4 Pro V2 in no, any no. category, except what? size. Except size, okay? And and that's the and only reason I have to say that. You, you have two other very portable drones, the Mini what? and the Mavic, uh, Mavic, Mavic 2 Pro. Pro. So you already have two super portables. Okay, but here's this. And, I, and I'm not going to sell it. Just to, just to kind of let everybody know, you're still going to see Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 videos for a long time. I I'm got not... first dibs on the sale. Okay. What I would do is this. And, 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 and I, know, I know, well, Ron, you have to, you, you ping me, ping me your account number and, and, and I'll get it to you. All right, <laughs> Mavic 3, and, and, and I will go on record in saying this, and this is going to be my last question before we kind of have our closing thoughts here, okay? Would you sell your Mavic 2 Pro or Zoom to get a Mavic 3 if, if Frank Wang has just knocked it out of the park and a total home run on it, okay? And I'll answer this question first. In a heartbeat, I'd sell my Mavic 2 Pro if the Mavic 3 is a home run knocked out of the park. Yeah, yeah I, I absolutely agree with you, Bill. Uh, yeah, if it had a, a – yeah, of course. Yep. Um, let, let me ask Bill – before I bet my answer, I want to ask Bill one thing. What is the home run feature of the Mavic 3 that's going to make me sell my entire collection here to buy it? What 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 it, What is the – you know the 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 you know the the, the home run feature and uh, Bill from Metro Drones. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Oh yes, thank thank you, Bill from, from but, Metro yeah. Drones. Appreciate but Bill, it. What, what is the what what can, what can this possibly have that's going to make me put everything up on eBay? I'll call Frank Wang up and I'll let you know, Ron. Because we're okay. It can't it, it can't have bigger than one inch sensor camera, right? They're not going to put a two, two inch sensor on it, are they? Or right, uh, right. it's not going to do that. Here's what here here and this is just total speculation. This isn't even hearing anything from Lauren, anything. Okay. For me, what I think is gonna happen is I think with the Mavic 3, what you're gonna see there, okay, you're gonna see things like you're gonna have have a zoom on it, and you're gonna have all the capabilities that you have with a fan. A zoom with a one-inch sensor. Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 with a one-inch sensor. Basically, it's gonna be a Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 in a Mavic 2 body, and it's going to have 360. And the thing with this is, okay, with the 360 on our Mavic 2s, the side sensors only work when you're turning different modes on, okay? It's going to have 360 all the time is my is, is my is my book. And the kind of brains of a Skydio 2, that the obstacle avoidance brain mm -hmm. power of a Skydio 2, wow, that, that would be more than a home run. Yeah, and it would be a done deal. But yeah. you know what, Frank? I'm going to ask Frank, and when he gets back to me, I'll send you guys emails and let you, you know. You tell Frank if he does that, I'll put the whole collection on eBay or whatever, and I'll be a one drone man, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll fly that drone every day. I got clear skies. That's right. Okay, you know it's like it's like, and and you know you need to come. We need to come down to Reddington Beach here and, and, and do the pier again. Okay, and, and Ron will come down here with the Mavic Three. Is it, you know, is and we'll get down there right here too. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, guys, you know, we're going to kind of wrap things up here because it's the, it, it's the, it's the, it's five after nine here. At uh -oh. Eastern. So yeah, the coach is going to turn into a pumpkin here real soon. But anyway, um, just some closing thoughts tonight, Marcus, take it away. Yeah. So D Wiz, I hope to get out to, we're going to have some decent weather here. And of course I can't go very far. I could go to the, 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 the school grounds uh, next door to me and fly a couple of drones, but I hope to get that uh, 
Femi X8, my 2018 version that I have and fly it a little more. It's fun. I haven't flown that in a while, so I'm enjoying that. And also uh, getting that uh, Zeno 2 out a little bit. And the drone that I have not flown in a while, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say this, is my Mavic 2 Zoom. So I'm anxious to, to get it out again. And uh, the, I, I do want to give that message that I give to everybody every time. Hey, uh, let's let's all work our way through this COVID-19 crisis. Hopefully, we're over the top of the hump now. I everybody is is hoping that. Uh, but uh, take care of yourself. Uh, uh, observe social distancing and, and and everything that our authorities are asking us to do. We all need to do it. And be kind to your fellow man. Let's all take care of each other and be nice to each other. Uh, not just throughout this thing, but we should be doing that always. And uh, that's it. Ron. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, great thoughts. And, uh, you know, uh, thanks for passing us along. Um, we had such an action-packed show tonight, Bill. We never talked about the Evo 2 and the, and the rumors that, um, you know, they're all packed up and ready to go. They're boxed up in China, but that they can't be shipped because they're not considered uh, essential electronics. I mean, it's just a rumor. You know, uh, uh, it's been on a couple of forums, but it was, we didn't even get to talk about that. Day. And who knows, of all these drones we talked about, the Evo 2 Pro could be the best of the bunch. Well, our good buddy, Mr. Candano, did an unboxing of his Evo 2 tonight. The Pro? Uh, the 8K model. Oh, yeah. well, nobody nobody wants that thing. We need the, we need the Pro on his channel. <laughs> but... but <laughs> I, all joke aside, I'm glad Ken got it. I'll I'll pop over and watch that, uh, you know, when I get a chance. Um, but yeah, everybody out there in chat, thanks for joining us tonight. Great comments, um, you know, great questions. As I always say, I learn as much from you guys in chat as you do us on the show, whatever. And um, you know, I want everybody to join us. You know, to be safe out there. Um, you know, from. Uh, practice your social distancing and everything and uh hopefully we get through this uh sooner and later and we're all outside you know flying our new mavic 2 airs and our evo 2s and our femi x8 2020s and uh, any other drones that may happen to come down the pipeline what i uh marcus did you get that what's that drone you saw at ces that at ces that little that funny little drone oh the v copter did you get the v copter in no. yet no okay. V-copter ordered here. Yeah. Bill, what about you? Yeah, we didn't talk about the V-copter rumors. No, we didn't. There are no, there are, because there are none, folks. The V-copter may never show up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I, we, that's a whole nother show. So I'm going to quit talking. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. And I'm going to throw it back to Bill to wrap this show up tonight. All right. First of all, you need to go out and check our friend Mikey and Ron. They're going to be on Philly Drone Life uh, right after us. So, Definitely head over there when you're done done with us. Um, the, M Mikey, Mikey, you're a great guy, and 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 always, you know, Ron joining him, it's going to be always always a good time. So make sure you do that tomorrow night. Our good friend, Mr. Bill Thomas, uh, Coast to Coast Drones, eight thirty Eastern time. Ron's going to be on tomorrow night, but he's going to have John Coopy on and going to be an FPV extravaganza tomorrow night. So if you want. To anything you want to know about FPV, John Coopy is the man as far as that's concerned, as, as far as I'm concerned, okay? John's head knowledge about FPV is off the freaking charts. So you definitely want to go in and tune in to Coast to Coast Drones tomorrow night. So um, with all that being said, all right, um, you know, we're all going through a tough time. And I start wanted to start off the show with a little bit of humor tonight. And um, if you didn't catch it, make sure you go back and watch your first five. It was, it was a pretty good meme. And I'll, and I'll be sure to post it in my in my Facebook group and Facebook page. But, um, you know, Mr. Rogers had three rules in life for success. Be kind, be kind, be kind. Okay. Um, you know, we're all going through this. This isn't something that's just hitting. It's not just like a hurricane hitting Florida or a bad snowstorm in, in New Jersey or in Idaho. Okay. This, this is a global, this is everybody, everybody that can hear my voice is being affected by this. I had a, I had a good friend of mine from college pass away. I have a good friend of mine for high school right now. And say a prayer. His name's Gene. He's fighting for his life right now, guys. He's in an intensive care unit with COVID-19. So say a prayer, some positive thoughts. Uh, I'm sure he would appreciate it. it. I was stunned to hear about that. So it, it doesn't discriminate, okay? And follow what your government tells you to do. 
they tell you to stay inside, stay inside. They tell you, you know, social distancing, social distancing, wash your hands, do all this. I was reading today and it's just, uh, just, I'll be real brief here. Okay. That, um, on MedCram, um, on, on YouTube, and that's a good channel to check out this, this virus attacks both your immune system and your lungs at the same time. It's a two pronged attack. So, you know, do things to build up your immunity, take vitamin C, take vitamin D, take, take zinc. Okay. And, and most of all, you know, do the washing and the hands thing. We'll all get through this. We'll all get to the other side here. Okay. Um, you know, that, that's the good thing, you know, hunker down, we'll get to the other side. And when we get through, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to enjoy life again. Okay. And we're enjoying life right now. Okay. That's why I think these shows are so good, not only for you guys, but for us, we get to talk about drones for an hour and, and just totally escape what's going on in the world. Okay. And, and I think it's fantastic. And, and I'm thankful. And, and also think about those who don't have jobs right now. Um, you know, and be mindful of them. And if there's anything you can do for them safely, please go out there and do that. Um, also, I'll ask you to do this. If you patronize local restaurants, okay, and if they have gift cards available, buy gift cards online, okay? They would really appreciate it. Those mom and pop shops, okay, they're depending upon us to come back to them after all this is over for their very survival and for jobs, okay? This is what it's all about, all right? Well, I've said enough. I've stood on my soapbox long enough. You know, normally I always say, you know, it's a great day to fly, but I'm going to close like I've been closing things with stay inside, stay alive. Good night, everybody. Good night. Welcome to Build the Drone Reviewer podcast, episode 58. Femi X8 SE 2020 release, Xeno 2 updates, and DJI news. Join Ron, Marcus, Lauren, and myself as we discuss the release of the Femi X8 SE 2020. We compare the 2020 model with the 2018 model, and we give our recommendations. We also discuss the recent updates to the Xeno 2 and what that includes, and also the latest news regarding DJI. So without any further ado, let's roll the broadcast in its entirety. Good evening. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live Season 2, Season 3, Episode 14, Xeno 2 Stability Issues. We're going to talk about the Femi X8 SE 2020 and some DJI news that you're definitely going to want to stick around for. Marcus, how are you this evening? Doing, doing really good, Bill. Uh, man, I took, the, I took the Xeno 2 out today. I got all that new firmware installed and, and went out for a little flight, did a... Uh, uh, a waypoint mission with it, and it worked out uh, uh, really well. So, yeah, more to talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, uh, Lauren, how about you? Well, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've been dealing all day with the good old rumor mill, and uh, uh, I've had little, literally over 200 texts, emails, and phone calls. So, <laughs> yeah, a little, little tired, but I'm here. How about you, Rod? Well, I'm doing well. I haven't worked as hard as you, Lauren. Boy, that that made text message. That sounds like a teenager or whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> getting all, you know, phone blowing up or whatever. But no, my, my phone hasn't blown. The only person texted me all day was my my good buddy, uh, Michael, over at Philly Drone Life, who we will be going live right after this show at 9 p.m. on the Philly Drone Life network of shows his youtube channel whatever but enough self-promotion no it wasn't a good day to fly here but there was a good day otherwise um i i didn't i actually did test out the new femi i have the new femi already i this is the same joke from last night and here it is the femi palm you know i got i got a little more hands-on time with the new femi today and i'll uh, talk about that in the show if we, we get a chance but bill was it a good day to fly in Florida today? Well, yeah, it was actually. And, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm doing my due diligence to help the, the, the supply chain, which, you know, it was kind of nice to hear um, some kudos to, to everyone in the supply chain, including those behind the scenes, which that, that would be me, um, you know, and, and uh, my hats off to those who, who are any part of the supply chain from the farmer to the cattle man, cattle rancher, to the grocery store clerk, everybody in between. Thank you for all you're doing. Um, you know, and and it's an honor to help support 
you know, my company and my country in this time of need. It's, it's a way of being able to serve my country. I just dropped a link in there. And what it is, is, and I found it very useful. It's um, COVID-19 projections assuming full social distancing through May 2020. Now, what it is, is you can break it down by your geographic area. And it's basically going to tell you when you're going to go over the peak as far as hospitals are concerned. So um, that is from that's the, that's one of the websites they've been talking about. So I wanted to wanted to drop that in, in there and it will be in the descriptions for you guys to check that out. And we're going to we're going to close and talk about that. But we're here to talk about drones tonight. OK, um, you know, I know a lot of you were tuning in to watch about drones. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend most of the time talking about drones. Well, you know, the Xeno 2 has been a big hit. OK, and, you know, there there has been another firmware update. So without any further ado, I'm going to have Mr. Ron Brown tell us about this firmware update and then also tell us what he found in this firmware update. Ron, take it away. Thank you, Bill. Uh, it, it was a rash of uh, firmware updates for the uh, Xeno 2 last week. Um, we had an app update about a week, more than a week ago, the 1.15. We had a transmitter update, 1.13. And an aircraft, a controversial update to the aircraft of, of version 1.21, uh, uh, a version that many people never received. They only got uh, 1.2.0, but... Uh, I think Marcus will in a minute he'll talk about how to get the you know the the one the one uh, dot point dot one or whatever. But anyhow, um, so, uh, so some of these uh, the the second transmitter update did not come until like Saturday. So um, I, I got a chance to test fly the drone uh, twice on all this new uh, uh, you know firmware, and I had what I called the perfect hover Saturday. It took off on the beach in a little bit of breeze and hovered up there just like a DJI drone. But I know from my good buddy Marcus and other people online, that's not the experience of all the CO2 pilots with the updates. Um, you know, it seems like these drones, um, you know, nobody's got the same drone. I, I, I think I'm quoting somebody here. You know, no two Xeno 2s are alike. And um, How did it hover after you woke up? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, on Monday we hovered again, and it did, it did quite hover as good, you know, as it did on Saturday. But it, it, it was still pretty good. I'm going to tell you the Saturday, uh, Lauren, Saturday's hovering. It, it hovered as good as the Mavic Mini, maybe better, or on the same same spot, same conditions, off the same lane, lane pad. It may have did better than the Mavic Mini, but again, it was a tail two dro a tail two days here. It didn't do quite as good Monday. It went up and down a little bit, but side to side, it, it hung in. But but that's not the real showstopper. The real showstopper is they've added YouTube streaming to it, just like the DJI drones have. Um, they added a uh, GPS following, which it had the active track following before but now they've added where it just follows the gps built into the transmitter so um if you don't want to draw that thing or whatever you're not worried about being centered in the middle of the frame it'll follow you along you know in your adventures um randomly filming whatever it's going to film and i discovered a secret feature that i talked about last night that i, I tried to google search it today and nobody's talking about it yet in the camera settings menu they put in a new setting on the first set of camera menus the second one from the bottom they put in i Something three letters in raw. I I, I should have wrote this down. Right. Say SLN raw. S L N raw. There you go. Marcus said it. And what it does, what it seems to do is, um, I mean, we all know raw is a term usually uh, is a you know usually put with photos. You take a raw photo and it captures much more information than JPEG. But you don't usually associate the term raw with video. Maybe log video is sort of the. Um, the video version of, of raw so but but you know how hubson they kind of use words in context that most of us in the u.s don't really use them but anyhow so i i, I did half the flight without this raw thing checked and then i did this latter half with it checked and it seemed to help with the overexposure image that the uh the hubson camera has when it's like facing the sun i mean not even directly the sun just when it's getting a lot of light from the sun even if you're off kilter a little bit it still kind of overwhelms the camera, and this seemed to balance it out a little better. And plus, it took the when this happens under the normal settings, the ground is usually, you know, so dark it's like in a shadow. And this kind of helped the balance the exposure on the ground, keeping the um, the sky better exposed. Now this wasn't perfect, 
I saw a lot, a ton of lens flare on this, uh, maybe even more lens flare than a normal setting. So, I mean, this is a perfect, but it could be a step in, in the right direction. But I'm, I'm very excited with this latest round of updates. And that's kind of the, oh, and I got one more thing too. And I don't know if this was in there before. On my flight on Monday, I went to take off and I saw at the top of the screen where it gives the error messages, like it says calibrate the compass. It said, I don't know the exact word, but it was telling me my battery wasn't latched in. It, it somehow let me know that it was the two latches on, on each side of the battery. One of them wasn't properly latched in. And sure enough, I picked it up and I pushed it forward, locked it in place. So it knows that the battery is not locked in completely or whatever, which um, I think I've seen that in other drones, but I've never seen it on a budget price drone before. The, the Mavic, Mavic 2s will do that, yeah. Right, but uh, uh, but but I, I think that's not budget price. Not drone. budget drones, no. Yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah. That, that's real good for for those. Yeah, yeah. So Marcus, you yeah, know, you've yeah. done you've done it as well. So it's once again once again a tale of two cities here. Why yeah. don't you once you pontificate about your experience? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so I went and did the uh, the same uh, updates today. So so for the uh, aircraft, it's one point zero point two. And for the remote control, it's 1.1.4. And both of them say that they were supposed to improve stability. And they kind of vaguely mentioned some camera stuff in there. But what they never tell you what it really what it really does. So, of course, what a lot of us are interested in, and I know Ron has had a pretty good uh, hover on his. I, uh, and I can tell you, if you put my Xeno 2 and the Mavic Mini side by side, it isn't even a contest. That mini will sit there like a rock. That Zeno is moving around. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad drone. It's a good drone. I'm going to tell you one quick story from my flight today. I took it out over the uh, over the grass, over the field. And uh, as I was, when I came to the end of my line there and I let go of the stick, I was about six feet off the ground, let go of the stick. The drone went up to 24 feet. And then sank back down to about three feet. Now, now, what those bottom sensors are for on that drone, I have no idea. But at the end of the day, that really doesn't mean a thing because how often are you flying that close to the ground? When you have that drone up in the air, you, you never even know that. So that is just kind of one of those things that's fun to test and so forth. Now, that said, that feature that Ron was uh, – that Ron discovered that SLN video. And Ron, I have kind of a theory on that, that I think that may be Hubson's version of HDR. And Bill, I'm gonna ask you for the uh, for the screen here, and I'm gonna play a uh, section of it here. Well, hold the... Hang on here, just one second. Sorry. All right, can you see my screen, Bill? Uh, not yet. Okay, so I, I clicked share. So, hang on. You might you might have to decide what you're sharing. Yeah, yeah. Well, this I, I've got. I selected my entire screen because it wouldn't let me. Uh, do application. So I've got my entire screen, uh, and uh, Bill, I think I think you have to to let me share. I'm not sure. Ron has done it. Technical difficulties, folks. Just hang in there. We will get these yeah. solved, and we will return we'll to our regular schedule programs. <laughs> well, maybe we'll just have to try that another time, huh? Okay. I, I don't know. I, I was hitting share screen on my end, but it's just for me. So, well, let um, me, yeah, let me, let me, tr let me try it again, Bill. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, share screen again. Uh, folks, our IT, there we person, go. Our IT person must be off because uh, they're, they're uh, quarantined because of the virus. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's a good looking video. Look at those mountains. Yeah. So this is with, that SLN raw uh, selected. Uh, and Ron, I got a theory. So what I've noticed here is that, you know, you, 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 you see that the sky real well and, you, and the ground is real vivid and everything. Could this be Hubson's version of HDR? 
I think you may be onto something there, Marcus. It almost looks like it's a polarizing filter on there because that that yeah, it does a real good job. So so in fact, I'm gonna I, I like it so much. I don't know why I would why I would fly uh, in in any other version. And, and so, in fact, right here, you can see I raised the camera so that it was half sky and half ground to really, you know, give it a chance to, uh, to blow out the ground in it, and it's not doing it. And this was, the sun, this was taken midday, so the sun is kind of directly up. Uh, and I was in sport mode there, so the minute I hit forward, it dropped the uh, gimbal. But let me, uh, let me show you then in regular mode. So this is the difference. This is in regular mode. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying that SLN looks a lot better. What do you guys? Yeah. Think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt, Ron. This was a, this was this was a stellar find. You're going to make the Hubson Hall of Fame right now for that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. So you guys have seen enough. Of oh, that. definitely. That was yeah. That was wild. Very impressive. That yeah. was yeah. Definitely going to. Um, you know, oh, so impressed he left for a second. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hit the button. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that I, that I have to say, and I think I talked about it last night is, you know, and I think both Ron and Marcus mentioned it as well is, you know, Hubson's been on top of stuff and, you know, from when there's where the Xeno one started to where it ended up, that's the reason, whole reason I decided to get a Xeno two from, from Ron and Marcus's experience in, in the updates they've done. And Hubson has been really on top of things. And if this is their answer to, you know, this, you know, supposed lens flare issue or, you know, or, or giving us, you know, s something else. It's very noteworthy. And I think it's, it's great. And Marcus, thank you for that video. That's going to be fantastic. When you do a video on that, that, that people are, people are by the thousands are going to watch that literally. I mean, seriously. And you, and you saw it here first in the build a drone reviewer show. That's right. That's no, no, right. Let, let me give credit where credit is due. Ron Brown is the guy that discovered it. And he is the guy that that uh, figured out. I probably wouldn't have ever even seen it if Ron hadn't have found it. So wow. you know, while we're on, while we're on conspiracy theories, you know what it was, Marcus? Hobson was watching that show we did last week where we were talking about the new Femi X8 2020. And remember, we were talking about how you know the the, the new Femi has HDR. We were saying, well, you got to either choose whether you want 4K 60 with the Zeno 2. Or you want 4K30 with HDR for the Phoebe? You know, it's always a, it's always a, a choice. But oh, now, so 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 Hopson said, "Oh, you know, Marcus and Ron are right. We're going to throw HDR. We're going to have them both." That's it. I bet you're right, Ron. It could I'm be right. Ron. Ron. Uh, you know, you, you were just you were you were you were the master at this. Uh, what, 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 what's the guy's name? Ron's Hopson. Uh, Sam Lee. Sam Lee was watching. Sam Lee was watching. There you go. That's why Ron Brown gets paid the big bucks. Yeah. I got to cash a stack of checks, uh, uh, you know, right as soon as the show's over. Sam Lee said, said hold my beer to the owner uh, of Xiaomi, okay? He says, hold my beer here, okay? We're going we're gonna to up you on on this. And hey, then, I, 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 what's the DJI uh, guy? What's, what's the, the owner? Or the Frank, Frank Wang. He, he he probably even called Frank Wang and said, "Hey, I'm I'm coming for you, brother." <laughs> uh, this is fun. I'll, be, I'll be coming for you, especially when DJI leaves the U.S. <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about that, that on, just we're that later on, folks. Just hold on. That's later on. Okay, we're we're that is coming up. Here. In the business, they call that a teaser. That's a teaser. Okay, Ron's pretty good with that. So, it, it, good with the teasing too. What we're going to talk about now is, and it's actually, my video on it is actually doing real well. Um, we're going to talk about the Femi X8 SE 2020. Now, I know Ron and Marcus did a special show. I think it was over the weekend about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, and Marcus is holding up his Femi X8 SE, the 2018 version. So we're going to take a look. Banggood listed a comparison chart, which was fantastic out there. So we're going to take a look look at some of these things. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it and see, you know, because one of the quite big questions I've been getting in my video was, is this a drone that we should consider kind of a thing? You know, are the upgrades worth it? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let's go ahead and get that up here.
All right. Now, this is the first screen that what it does is it's basically comparing again the 2020 version of the aircraft itself against the 2018 version. And the notable things here, almost everything is the same. Um, you're seeing a difference in flight time of two minutes. OK. Um, and the weight, it, the weight is something else that has changed that I noticed on this as well. Um, the 2018 is 790 grams. This is 765. Um, the other thing that I noticed on here too was the satellite positioning systems. It lists GPS plus GLONASS plus BEIDUO. And then on the 2018 version, it's GPS plus GLONASS. I have no idea what this is, this BEIDUO. Um, it could be their version of Lease 2, like it's on the Hubson. Um, it could be their version of OcuSync. Um, Maybe that's why they have the increased range. We don't know. But this oh, is could be a D in there. Maybe that could be the build a drone reviewer uh, satellite network. It could be. It could I think, be. I think it's the Chinese version of GPS. Okay. Is what that is. All right. We're going to go ahead and look at the next one here. This is a remote controller. And really, it's about the same. There's really, there's really no differences here at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead. We'll move to the next one here. The gimbal, there was no no differences listed. And then we're going to go ahead. This is where we're going to spend some time here because with the camera system, there seems to be quite a bit of difference here. Um, the lens, the uh, field of view, 80 degrees on the 2020 version, um, 78.8 degrees on the 2018 version. Does 2 degrees or 1.2 degrees field of vision more make that much of a difference in a camera, gentlemen? What do you think? Uh, you won't even notice that is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, what I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, for, for that, I mean, you know, it looks good, but okay. Well, the aperture listed on the 2020 version is F2.0, and the aperture on the 2018 is F2.2. Again, what do you guys think? Well, any that that will make a difference. Any, any you know, uh, wider aperture. Sorry. <laughs> It will let it more light, so you know, uh, uh, you know that, that that will that will help. That that's a good thing. Okay, all right. Uh, focal distance uh, three point five four millimeters, and on the twenty eighteen version four point seven three millimeters. What do you guys think on that? I, I'm confused with this. Um, yeah, I think these numbers are are kind of re, you know like in in my mind, I, I'm kind of dyslexic and kind of reverse. I guess what they're trying to say in here is. It, this one will have a greater focal distance, even though the number is lower. Which yeah, I kind yeah. of have, like, I have I have trouble getting my head around that 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 concept, but I think that's what they're trying to say that it'll have better focal distance. You know, that'd be able to focus on a subject at a longer distance than the current one. If that yeah, makes I, th sense. I think you're right on that. Talk within the audience. Now that sensor is a little different. It's one over two point six. Um, and then the old one was one over two point three. So Marcus could talk to this. We did a little. Mark, we did we crunched the numbers on this the other night. So Marcus can can talk. Go to for it, Marcus. Well, Ron and I had just a, we just did a little investigation to it because it was confusing to us, right? Uh, we saw a comment where a gentleman said that, hey, that new sensor was going to be smaller, and we're looking at that and go, well, two point six is bigger than two point three, but no, in photographic terms, it is not. That is a fractionally smaller sensor on the 2020 version. We we looked it up online and and uh, they talked about it. Now, as as uh, Ron said, that that doesn't necessarily mean it's worse. A bigger sensor typically is better, right? But uh, it's also the quality of that sensor. So I cannot believe that that. Uh, Femi would intentionally take a step back. So I have to believe that they pro it probably is a better quality sensor than what they had on the 2018 version. Ron, what's your take? Well, this is, again, this is just a total theory, what I'm saying here. But even though we're getting a smaller, a slightly smaller sensor this time, and the smaller the sensor, the less light you, you you would let in, but with the, with the ink with the ink you know the increase in the aperture with you know going down a couple ticks there the the f two point oh that will let more light in so maybe that will just bounce out even that we'll still be able to capture the same amount of light because we have got a wider uh, aperture lens and a slightly uh, you know smaller um, 
censored again is this is all theory on my part i don't you know i don't know if anything i'm saying is uh is going to bear out in in actual testing yeah we're spitballing no no yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know and, and that's and that's you know because these differences aren't large but there are some differences um now the shutter speed um it has 32 dash one over eight thousand s and then on the 2018 version it's eight dash one over eight thousand s um you know i don't know enough about this what do you guys know about this well uh basically that shutter speed is is uh you can do a longer exposure with that one okay uh, on the t uh, 2021 uh just want to get back onto the sensor thing a little bit uh you know sensor size is not necessarily everything it all depends on your pixel size that are on the sensor because the larger the pixel is that's on the sensor uh the more sensitive it's going to be for light and, and better for the uh especially for the low light performance um i can surmise and just like bill said kind of spitballing but uh, i think the only reason you're getting a better picture is uh through the programming the firmware that's on there um, because realistically that sensor should not perform as well because of the smaller size. Uh, uh, you know, looking at the other specs that they're they're uh, kind of comparing back and forth, I think uh, realistically they're doing it all in firmware. Yeah, that's a good point. Because uh, but, but before we go on too far, uh, many people out on on the internet have already speculated that this is a completely new camera than the other camera. This isn't any type of you know just like a upgrade to, to the camera. This is a completely new camera we're going to get on the 2020. That's speculation, but it does make sense that this this isn't even the same camera. Well, you know that makes a lot of sense, Ron and, and Lauren, because take a look at the video resolution. It's it's there's more there's more there's more options for video resolution on a on the 2020 than there is on the 2018 um and that's always a good thing because you can adjust it to you know if you know the environment you're flying in um you know whether it's you know sunny day cloudy day you know whatever you're going to be shooting you can adjust that resolution to be able to suit your need and and i and I like it. It gives you a lot of options. And, you know, anytime you have options as far as choosing a resolution is concerned, I think that's pretty great because, and obviously too, you know, if you want to go out there, you know, you know, and also, and I'll talk about this and, and then I'll, I'll get your feedback. Um, the memory card, it'll take now up a, to a 256 gig on, on the 2020, whereas uh, on the 2018, it took a 64 gig. So, you know, with all this being said, you know, it's probably a new camera. You know, I, I would have a tendency to agree with that, guys. And I think Lauren's right, too. I think a lot of this is driven by software, not by the camera. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I would agree. I know software makes a huge difference. I mean, obviously, we saw that with uh, with the original Hudson Zeno, how they improved that with just simply software improvements. So I'd say that's probably true. But I also, uh, I'm thinking like Ron says, I think it's a completely new camera. They're talking about a different chipset and everything for it. So uh, I don't even think it's the same camera as on the 2018 version. And time will tell. Okay. And this is just the charger, battery, propeller, other parameters. It's, again, it's, it's the same as the other version. This really hasn't changed. But here's the interesting one. And it talks about, the feature and one thing that that okay um this um 30 meter optical flow positioning the latest positioning system utilizes a downside camera to keep the drone stability hovering it up to 30 meters even without gps um which is interesting um and it talks about um hdr video and photo three i mean a lot of these are the same but then you look flight times up to 35 minutes and then the eight kilometer range um, so, you know, with all, all this being said, and one of the other things that I found, and I think I have it up on the, on the next screen here. Okay. That's the coupon code, which I will post in, in a link in the video. Okay. I don't have that here, but one of the other things that, and this is the article that I'm giving you guys a sneak peek here. 
So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and and stop the screen share. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? Because I had a lot of people asking me, you know, why should I consider this? If I first of all, okay. If you have a 2018, okay, and I know, and I'll and I'll make an exception with the exception of, of Marcus here, okay. If you have a 2018, this is probably not a drone for you. Am I right, guys? I, I agree with you, Bill. Even though I ordered one, <laughs> for I'm a nerd. Only. no, I'm a nerd, right? I, I I'm a drone nerd, and I just wanted one. But but you're absolutely correct. For the average person, it's not a big enough improvement to make it worth uh, spending that money. I. I would think. Yeah. And now, okay, now what about for someone who doesn't have a Femi XA SE right now? It's a steal right now. It's an no, absolute it's steal. Kind of price, it, it, the kind of price that I just put up there for $347, you know, it, it's like you better run and you better run quick. Um, you know, there will be a link in the description. And I'll also make sure that that coupon code is down there as well if you're interested in ordering it. I mean, it, I mean, when my money situation finally levels out because I've been ordering a lot of supplies for the house, that's when I, I'm going to be, you know, my due diligence with the buy button in, in securing one of these guys. I mean, you know, it, it's 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 for what you get for the drone. OK, it's it's a good it's it's a exceedingly good value. And I talked a little bit about this last night on Xeno Nation, and I hope you guys, if you guys haven't watched, watch replays, uh, watch the replay from last night. It's a great show last night. Um, one of the things that I brought up last night was, you know, how we say, you know, Autel and DJI, the competition is good for each other. Well, I think here, I think the competition between Hubson and Xiaomi is a good thing as well, too, because don't think that they don't compete against one another, okay? Um, you know, Xiaomi puts out some decent products. Okay, I know the A3 wasn't probably one of their better ones as far as as far as a drone concerned. I know Marcus can can pontificate about that for for a couple of hours. But this this X8 is really something that I think is worthy of people people noting. Um, you know, I know there were some people that early on there were some issues, and I know Marcus had an issue when he got his, and you know he just about lost lost his sanity when that happened, but, you know, all was well. And, you know, overall, it's it's been a good quality drone. I mean, as far as that's concerned, what are you guys' thoughts? Let me tell you, Bill, so the, the Femi X8 SE, obviously my first experience with it was was not a good one with the propeller disintegrating and, and, a, and a crash. But after that, uh, it was similar to Hubson, in the way, man, they kept pushing the firmware upgrades, and you the drone improved, and it got to be that it was one of my uh, go-to drones. Uh, and then I then I sent it off on a little field trip uh, across the nation, uh, and and Ron ended up with it for a little while. And I'd be flying it right now, but except I have a stress crack in one of the arms that uh, that I need to get fixed up. I was uh, flying yeah. too wild. I was flying it too wild here in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were you were just fine. Uh, I think that that is a problem that is uh, inherent in the Femi X8 SE. And if you own one, you better be inspecting the arms as you go along. Uh, so I bought a new arm for it, and I'm going to get it repaired. And Bill, to your point, what I'm looking forward to doing is having the 2018 version and the 2020 version side by side. Yeah, that'll be good. And we can answer a lot of these questions, right? We'll we'll take a look at uh, Oh yeah, especially you know when you when you the proof will be when when you put your your 2018 version video on one side and your 2020 version. I mean, th there's going to be the proof right there and, and and we'll see that. And I think the other thing cuz I know both Ron and Marcus have, have, have mentioned this, you know, um, it it doesn't lose. It's it's not a question of losing signal as far as the range is concerned, but there is a question a lot of you know that FPV kind of fades out after after so long. And I know Ron found that to be the case when he was fly when he was when when Marcus uh, gave him his to to fly. Is that right, Ron? Well, I mean, it's not that you lose the FPV; it just goes real low resolution. Where okay. you know it's. Uh, <laughs> You know, this is you know, this is probably a mean thing, but it, it's so low resolution. You don't think you're getting good video because it looks like it's uh, 
you know, roll those st standard definition video. It's not that it good. It goes away. It just it gets gets real low res quickly. Yeah, and you know, hopefully, you know, that's another thing that we can find out as as far as that's concerned. You know, because I, you know, from the quality that I've seen, you know, when Ron, from Ron's videos and from Marcus's videos, um, you know, they look great from 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 the Femi X8 SE. So, you know, we're going to kind of wrap this segment up, but, um, you know, there will be a link in the description and there will be a coupon code. It's $347, guys. I mean, it's you can't it, it's really a steal. It's something you definitely should take a look at. All right. Now we're going to talk about DJI news and boy, what a what, what news. You know, <laughs> you know, let me tell you this. OK, Lauren is tired tonight. All right. And there's a reason he's tired. We're going to get to that here. In just a quick second, let me go ahead and share the screen here and do it right this time. Oh, okay. boy. There we go. All right. Now, let's go ahead and, and drop the chat out here. Okay. This article, and it's is in SUAS News, is DJI leaving the U.S. Okay. Say it ain't so, Bill. <laughs> Say it ain't so, Ron. It's it, okay. It you know, ain't so. <laughs> I, and with, with that, you know, I, I know Lauren, Lauren has spent most of his day on that, okay? And he really is tired because he's had numerous texts and messages and everything. Lauren, I'm going to let you kind of drive this for a little bit here, and then we'll kind of interject. Um, you know, you know, we know it's not so, but, you know, kind of kind of enlighten us here a little bit. And maybe, you know, this will this will get out to a lot of people so they can you can stop getting texts all hours of the day and night. Yeah, please, please uh, don't text Lauren. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, what happened was, uh, uh, geez, I don't even know where to start, but uh, DJI did some made some business decisions, and you know, it, it's no big shock to anybody literally in the world that uh, every country's economies have been affected by the coronavirus, and. So that, that's no real big shock. And, and is any company that wants to survive beyond a week, uh, sometimes you have to make business decisions. And at this particular time, DGI have made a few business decisions. One, one of those being that uh, they decided to do a little bit of uh, restructuring and stuff. So that started part of the rumor mill going. Um, and it was just simple restructuring. Um, and then the other thing was because of the downturn in the economy, uh, some of the dealers that uh, used to have financial terms with DJI, you know, things like Net30, the, the, some of the dealers that were having problems even paying their bills at Net30, uh, DJI cut them off their terms and basically if you as a dealer if you made your order you had to prepay for your order up front and that kind of upset a few people and the in with DJI there's a DJI dealers network where dealers can talk to one another and stuff like that and so the grumblings went on there until finally uh, I guess somebody decided they were going to go public with their thoughts on what they figured was happening, whether it's it's fact or fiction. They decided that they were going to go public with it. And from that point forward, uh, one publication did decide to pick it up and took everything the person said as gospel. Um, and of course, when one publication does it, then the next publication picks it up. And, you know, it's the old gossip game. So um, it is absolutely, I can tell you, 100% not true. Um, the uh, They are making business decisions at, at DGI, but that's to be expected with any business, whether you're, you know, starting out or a 100-year-old company. Some of them are not going to be popular, but if they don't make these decisions, then they will not, uh, they'll not be around to do business in the future. Uh, I've seen a few people have mentioned on here tonight, they wanted to know about the Mavic Air 2. Um, 
I can tell you with pretty much certainty to not expect that in the near future. Uh, there was plans to release it in uh, the first half, actually more specifically in uh, May or June of this year. It now looks like that's going to be held off. Uh, it's not because of any financial reasoning for DGI other than uh, why have a party if nobody's going to show up? And by that, um, there's a lot of people that the, uh, that are going to be very mindful of their pennies. You know, there's a lot of people have lost their jobs. There's a lot of people have got a lot of financial uh, insecurity at the time. And right now, buying a new drone would be, shall we say, the furthest thing on their mind. Um, so... That, that's not DJI's fashion. They like to, you know, make a big splash and sell 10,000 drones in the first month and things like that. So for them to uh, release a new drone right now, when the sales figures on the current drones is actually still pretty good. So it doesn't really make much sense uh, when there's too much consumer uh, uncertainty. The, the enterprise stuff is still selling the same. It, there's been no real change in the sales in that. It's just the consumer stuff. So I I, I can see DJI releasing the, the uh, Mavic Air 2, or as I'm just calling it now, is just the Mavic, because I think they're going to rename it as well. But I can see that being released for the Christmas shopping season. Before that, not likely. And, you know, everything you said makes sense, Lauren. I mean, you know, it's we, we, we face something and, I, and it, we'll, we'll talk about this at the end of the show, but we face something nobody's ever faced before. Nobody alive has ever faced this before. It's it's just it, it, it's it's astronomical. And the economic impact is is going to hit everybody. I mean, it's just it's not, you know, it, it's just not, you know, physical. It, it's it's economic and, and it's really it's really tough, and um, and I think DJI is very wise in making their decision. And you know, North America to DJI, you know, it, it's it's like why would they cut off one of their best income streams in the world from from that? It's not going to happen. Okay, somebody like Lawrence, you know, somebody ran with this, and just you know, DJI is making some business decisions and and, and and trying to help themselves out, which you don't blame them. Companies are. Or, you know, they're fighting to survive right now. I mean, you know, a lot of these companies, you know, might not be around if they don't make the, the right kind of business decisions. And, and I think DJI is doing that right now. And, you know, for, for instance, the business decision of, you know, waiting for the DJI Mavic or Mavic Air 2 or what, whatever it's going to be called till, till the holidays, till Christmas season. That may be a, a fantastic decision because, you know, by then, you know, hopefully the economy will have kickstarted. We'll be back in gear. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be we'll be looking for something to, to you know, to, to kind of bolster our spirits up. And, you know, by then we'll have some more nickels and dimes. I mean, guys, what do you think? Well, well, Bill, first, are you hitting at what you're going to get me for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just hit that buy button, Marcus. And it'll, it'll be it'll be all off to Idaho. I have your address. Hey, Marcus. Marcus, have you got a new Corvette under the Christmas tree? Hey, uh, there's a new one out. There's a new one out, right, Marcus? It it, 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 it could happen probably in the next year or two. Uh, you never know. You never so, know. So you didn't drop a hint with Sarah to maybe have it have it what, sitting in your driveway Christmas morning. That's, that's I mean, a great idea. See, see what you are friends for? You, guys, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. I, I know she'll probably, you know, chop me off at the neck for saying that. <laughs> yeah, no, she, if it makes me happy, she's happy. Just like your wife, Bill. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's hey, Bill, a, a, after what Marcus said in these comments here, uh, I got to ask you, uh, uh, you got to be a Bill the Drone Advisor hat here. Now, the money I've been putting aside for the, the new Mavic, um, now, should I push that pile of money? towards the Altel Evo or should I push it towards the Femi uh, 2020? You know, Ron, I, I, I would, I would, I would push it towards the 2020. I mean, it's, you'll have it in hand in May, hopefully. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. well, 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 the, the, um, 
the Evo was going to be released at the end of March, so I should be able to, to, to get it right now in a couple days, right? Well, some people have actually gotten their Evos already. You know, I've heard some. Yeah, wait, 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 Bobby, do, do, do we know anybody personally who no, yeah. ordered an Evo 2 and received it? No, I don't. Because, okay. well, you know, and now, we know you, a lot of drone people, right? We, we, okay. We, hey, one thing you could say about us, we know the people that have drones. Okay. I can tell you this. My good friend, Ken Dono, okay, if, if, if the Evo 2 is out, <laughs> there'd be a video out, okay? Mr. He, Evo. Mr. Evo. Mr. Evo, that's right. Ken, hope you're doing well and staying safe. But yeah, and, and, well, you know what Ken says when you buy a drone, okay? You know, it's just like you can sleep on the couch and ask for forgiveness later, okay? That's his tagline. Yeah, he needs to have a, a hashtag for that. I mean, that, that that's that's definitely his tagline. You, you know what the real truth probably is, Bill? What's that? You've got a wife just like you were mine. If it makes him happy, she's happy too. Oh, I get yeah. oh you know, and, and I know he's told me. Well, you know, and his wife is, is 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 just like that. She's fantastic. You know, we we, we went out to dinner over, around Christmas time together, and you know, it, it, it and that's the thing. You know, here for each other kind of a thing, and, and I think that's fantastic. Um, you know, just to kind of maybe wrap the wrap this segment up here, you know. It's it's so easy to see how rumors spread, okay? And, and, and Lauren can attest to that. I mean, it was just, you know, it, it, it just like somebody poured gasoline on a fire and it just kind of like went all over and SUAS News is picking it up and, you know, and, it, and it's out there. And, and people think, and see, here's the thing, all right? When you see an article, you know, whatever news source, whatever, people think it's true, okay? Until, you know, somebody comes along and says, well, you know what? That's not the real story. Here's the real story, and you find some credible people, okay, th to say that, and, and you know, and, and that's why I like Lauren because you know what, Lauren doesn't he doesn't sugarcoat stuff. He says it like it is, okay. It's it's and it's right where it is, you know. And, and Lauren, if, if I could send you send your your favorite adult beverage tonight, I would, okay, to, for for the kind of day that you had. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's especially bad when they don't even go go and check sources. It's just Take, taken as fact, like uh, Brendan Schulman today, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of who he is, but, uh, you know, Vice President of Policy and, and Legal Affairs for DGI, he, he's flat out said, no, that it's all horse puckies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct here, <laughs> folks. <laughs> but as you say, I like to call it as it is, but I'm... <laughs> I'm I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and as it should be, okay, because you know, the last thing we need right now, okay, is you know, I try to focus right now on 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 some good things, okay, because you know, this show tonight is a, is a, is an escape for for all of us, all right, and uh, focusing on that instead of the negative, and, and that's a negative, okay, and, and you know what. I don't think, you know, I know, well, I won't say I don't think, I know, you know, Frank Wang, he, he's a step ahead of the game, all right? He's always a step ahead of the curve. And, you know, they're really with it as far as a business model is concerned with DJI, and they have to make business decisions. A lot of companies are going to have to do that, and, you know, they made a business decision here. And just because of that, it's like, and then you see, it's just like a mushroom cloud, and it just well, goes off. Uh, that and the other thing is, uh, um, you know, there's so much speculation because everybody's expecting DJI to to drop out the new Air 2, right? And so, you know, everybody's mind is wondering, oh, oh, they're not releasing a drone. They're not releasing a drone. They must be in trouble, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. Again, you know, the same thing here. You know, it's like, you know, it's a – and I can probably – if I'm a betting man – you know, there's they probably have warehouses of them already. Okay, ready to go. Yeah. Well, Bill, yeah. Bill, the same sources that say that DJI's leaving the U.S. are also saying that the new Mavic Air two, that it's coming out soon. It's it's gonna it has it's the only chance for them to save the company. Oh yeah, it's, it's like the test of the yeah, Mavic Air two. Now, if that know, doesn't do well, DJI's you know shutting down. Yeah, you know it, it's like woe is me. You know, we're all, we're all, you know, it, it, it's going to be the end of the world here. And it's not, all right? It, it really, really isn't. Um, 
I'm taking a look here. I'm looking at um, Brendan Schulman. I'm looking at his, his Twitter to see if there's anything on there. I'm not seeing anything. Check with Sam Lee. See if Hupton's leaving the U.S. Also, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's. Yeah. So, so let's let's put this into into perspective here. Okay. So if DJI is in trouble, Ron, you nailed it. What the heck do you think would happen to Hubson and Femi oh, and all these other little Yishin and all these other little dumb little drone makers that are out there? If we'll get, DJI can't make it, uh, we're they're they're all done. Well, guess what, Marcus? I'm writing an article in my in my blog tomorrow, and I'm going to say that. See, well, this is a bad thing because when when DJI leaves, you know. Hops is going to come out with the Zeno 3. It's going to be just as good as the DJI drones, and they're going to come to the U.S., and uh, and we're going to be all good, and we're going to save a ton of money, too. So, you know, that's my article. And okay. and it's and my, and my it's based on exactly zero facts. So, so Exactly. <laughs> so, so is GoPro going out of business, too? I mean, DJI no, they're, they're going to build a drone. It's, it's it's better than DJI drones, too. And they're going to stay in America. That That's another that's another article that I write based on the zero facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, that's what it's all about. Zero facts. So, um, you know, we got some that's, time that's here. That's my blog, hey, zero facts. No, well, can you share my screen for a sec? Yes, I'd be happy to. Yeah. I hope everybody was listening to oh. Ron's last remark. Yes, Actually, I did. Ron, that was great. Ron, Ron Dog's been after me here, uh, you know, about... Um, He's been on Lauren Hard. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so if you have a look, uh, are you familiar with Drone XL? I'm not sure if you are. Uh, Drone XL is uh, actually now uh, Haya Castellou's new publication. He's left Drone DJ. And probably one of the most credible writers uh, in, in the drone industry in North America. And uh, I can tell you right now that uh, he is of the same opinion and he's talked to, I know for a fact, he's talked to some of the same people as I have. So um, like I say, it's not just me that's saying this, it's it's uh, other credible sources as well. So I, I hope that answers your question. That's fantastic, Lauren. Could you, you you can drop can you drop a link in the in the chat for that article? I think people would would like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, that was great response, Lauren. I think that is uh, exactly exactly right. I mean, yeah. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Um, so one of the things I want to do here is I want to spend the last ten minutes here, um, and, and kind of go around and you know get some closing thoughts together and you know we spent most of the show you know just just kind of like you know the, the elephants in the room and we kind of pushed the elephant aside for a while but um you know i want to go ahead and you know let marcus and ron and lauren kind of pontificate and share their share their thoughts here uh, and take your time guys um and, and i'm going to share a special video clip here at the end um, when when you guys are done, so so take it away, Marcus. Okay, thank you, Bill. So yeah, hey, listen, you know we're all in the middle of this COVID nineteen thing, and it is no fun. And and Lauren touched on it, and Bill touched on it, and Ron touched on it. Listen, there are people that are in serious trouble now, not just medically, but financially. They don't know how they're going to pay their rent next month, et cetera, et cetera. So it is incumbent upon all of us to take care of each other and, and be nice to each other. You know, when you're tempted to flame somebody online or somebody cuts you off on the freeway, let them have that lane. Let's all call your neighbor. Make sure your neighbor has what they need. Uh, let's everybody uh, kind of take care of each other. And further, uh, I don't know about uh, every state of the union, but here in Idaho, our governor is allowing us to go outside as long as we maintain social distancing, and they very specifically say near to home. Well, I'm fortunate that I've got a park, uh, a school grounds actually that's about a block and a half to my from my house, so I'm still able to fly. So I took the Zeno 2 uh, up today and had a nice flight with it, tried out uh, a Waypoint Mission and stuff, and, I, you know, I know you guys feel the same way, but 
there's nothing that puts me in a better mood than going out and flying a drone. So, you know, let's kind of focus on those things and uh, let's keep everybody's uh, spirit up and do the best we can. And uh, Mr. Ron Brown. Uh, well said, Marcus. I, I want to thank you for all those uh, thoughts that I'm going to second them or ditto them. Uh, since I couldn't have said any better. I'm going to go another direction here and give us uh, well, first. I want to thank Lauren for coming on the show tonight and debunking a bunch of rumors out there that, uh, you know, that were probably un unsubstantiated or whatever. And he put a lot of people's fears at rest. Which, which I, I think is a good thing. It's like you guys said in these trying times, we don't need to be worrying about. Uh, um, I won't even say the. I won't even say the words I can say, but misinformation or whatever. So thank you, Lauren. And I also want to mention a drone. We I don't think we talked about it all. Somebody said in chat the Scotty O2 just got an update in the last couple of days. It was only for uh, Android for the past couple of days, but this morning it went live for iOS. So go. You know, fire up your Zeno 2, go right. into your settings, look for the update. It's there. It's not the showstopper everybody was looking for with the, you know, the increased range or whatever, but it's got, you know, uh, uh, a lot of bug fixes. I know Bill Thomas has already tested out, and he reports uh, good information. Speaking of Bill Thomas, drop by um, Coast to Coast Drones Drone Therapy tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Drone sends these on. They're going to talk about Hitman films and all the effects you could do, whatever. Should be a great show. And um, I'm going to check out my, I'm going to have videos up soon on, this new, on the new Phoebe, not the new Phoebe 2020, but the Phoebe Palm camera, which, uh, you know, looks a lot like a camera you may know by a company with three letters in the title that we talked about tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, so far, so good on this. I, you know, I still have a lot more testing to do. And um, I'm going to throw it over to Lauren. Oh, okay. Um, I guess the biggest thing i got to say is uh, if you think today, today's story is outrageous, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh. <laughs> I, I really hate to say it, but uh, realistically, in the drone business, everything is slow. You know, there, there, there are some stuff coming out, but... There's nothing that's really earth shattering and nothing that's going to reach out and grab you and really grab your attention too much. Okay. There, there is some stuff, but, uh, and when that happens, you're going to have publications that need to write something. And if you've been watching any of the publications recently, you'll see that the, uh, probably 90% of the drone articles are all about the COVID right and rightfully so it's like it's a worldwide pandemic but that's really all they have to write about uh from one of the groups that i run which is uh, drones for good international that's you know we've been publishing regularly all the good stories and we've had so much uh, to choose from because that's what all the big publications are writing about there 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 is some uh, some good news and stuff on, on commercial developments out, out in uh, Europe. Uh, don't know if anybody was aware, but today was the first um, actual commercial delivery of insulin by drone done over in Ireland. It uh, was, happened today. Um, but the, uh, the thing being is, you know, that's kind of a newsworthy, but, but there's not really that much happening. So, they're writing about, you know, all the COVID stuff. And once they run out of those stories, then they're going to be grasping at straws for just about anything and everything. So um, take take everything with a grain of salt. Check, double check, triple check your sources. And before I say anything live, especially like on here, uh, I can guarantee you I've double, tripled, quadruple checked my sources because... If I'm wrong, then it makes me look bad, and I don't like looking bad. So, <laughs> no but more, anyways, no. that being thank, said, everybody thank, stay thank strong. You for that. And uh, as Marcus had said, you know, a little bit of tolerance and a little bit of patience with people. You haven't got any idea of what that person is going through. You know, they could have lost their job because of the COVID, and, and they're upset. So, um, you you might be uh, very fortunate that uh, you haven't been overly affected. Everybody will be affected, but you know, um, just 
a little bit of patience with everybody and we'll all come through it together. Well said, Lauren and Ron and Marcus. Um, you know, first of all, I'd like to start off with a little bit of humor here is in my closing. OK, and, and and I found this. And now if, if you grew up back in the day, OK, um, you probably remember the Bee Gees. OK, who, who doesn't remember the Bee Gees? OK, and guess what? I actually saw them in concert. OK, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to say I'm proud of that or not. But anyway, OK, this group did a song and I'm going to drop the link. In the, in the chat, and it'll be in the description. It's called Staying Inside Coronavirus Bee Gees Parody. And I, obviously, I can't play it because, you know, I could, you know, get a copyright strike. I don't want to do that. But I'm going to drop a link, and, and you guys need to watch it. It, it is absolutely hilarious. But, you know, it, it, it makes a good point. Now, I don't know if you guys have taken a look and seen my hashtag. I changed my hashtag tonight. And my, my hashtag down there, I'm trying to point my finger there, um, down there says, stay inside, stay alive. Um, you know, one of the things that I can't st say enough is, you know, is now's not a time to be gallivanting around. OK, um, you know, do your business, get home and stay home right now. I mean, that's uh, that's paramount and it's working. And, and, and I think that's one of the things we're seeing some encouraging signs here. So, so number one, my number first message is to be encouraged here. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about hydroxychloroquine and some other drugs that are showing a lot of promise right now. Um, you know, and it's out, it's a drug that's already been out there and it's been used to treat malaria for years. The only known side effect is diarrhea from that. Okay. It's like, would I, would I rather have, have COVID-19 or get rid of it and have a little bit of diarrhea. You make the obvious choice here. Um, you know, one of the other sobering things is, and this is why you don't even want to think about getting it because, and Marcus can attest to it, being on a ventilator is is not a picnic, all right? Um, you know, I know my dad was after he had open heart surgery. Um, Marcus can attest to that. Um, and one of the other things that are saying now, even if you do survive COVID-19, if you have to, if you're going through a bout of it, you could have permanent heart damage. So yeah, it's it's just, you, you wanna avoid this um, at all costs. The other thing I wanna say is this, I'm proud of our supply chain here in the United States. Um, you know, I can't speak for other countries, but I'll speak for the United States. And that starts with the farmers, that farm, uh, the, the cattlemen, that starts with the, also the truck drivers, um, meat processing plants, and you know, food distribution centers, and ultimately grocery stores, okay? Um, I can't be more proud to be a part of this industry. I mean, I, I don't serve on the front lines, but you know, um, I, I think of my brothers and sisters here at, at, at Publix who are in the stores every day, who are cleaning the stores every day, who are cashiers. And, and literally, you know, it, it's like, you know, they're, they're having to be so careful every day with things. But what they're doing is they're keeping our country going. And, um, you know, I have to say, you know, the, the vice president called everyone who is is in that industry out tonight is is you know you're right underneath the frontline workers and we all know who the frontline workers are and i'm going to thank all the nurses all the doctors but also think of people all the techs all the phlebotomists all the uh, all, all the x-ray technicians and, and you know um all the ones who help make up uh the medical field right now they're all at risk they're all exposing themselves and they all have loved ones um, so keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers. OK, um, and one of the things I'm, I'm going to do is this. And I got to agree with Marcus here. And, and I know Lauren and Ron have kind of spoken to it as well. Guys, you know, the, the petty childishness that, that, that you see, there's no time for that. OK, literally. OK, it's when when you see people who are, you know, hitting, um, you know, Hitting, doing massive dislikes on videos or, you know, going out there and, and throwing, throwing flame comments out there and everything. OK, there's no time for this right now. OK, and, and I'm going to put this in perspective here. And this is what I'm going to kind of close with. And, and, I'll, and I'll have a thought after I play this, um, you know, I'm Lauren, deepest sympathies on the loss of your friend. I, I know I know that that was hard for you. And right after I found that out that night, I found out. I lost a friend from college and it was a very good friend. And if you've watched uh, the news lately, you may have seen this clip. Now I'm gonna play this clip from Facebook so you know there, there won't be any issues on it. 
Um, my friend was from college and, and I knew him. And, and, and I, I want to say this. He was a pastor at a church. He was the most real person I think I've ever met in my life. OK, he didn't have he didn't he didn't dislike anybody ever. People that made fun of him. Never, never, never. OK, he was all about doing good. He was all about loving love thy neighbor. OK, he he exemplified that. And he, he lived Mr. Rogers three statements. Be kind, be kind and be kind. OK, and that was how he, he got ahead. Well, I'm about to play a clip and then I'll talk about the clip and then we'll close. That's in memory of my friend, Pastor Tim Russell. I usually close with, it's a great day to fly, but my hashtag now is gonna be what I'm gonna be closing with uh, until we can get through this. And my hashtag and what I'm gonna say is stay inside and stay alive. Everyone be safe out there. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with you all. Please be safe. And we wanna see you here next week for Rotor Talk Live. Till then, have a, have a great week and please be safe. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.